but I don't see any live people in the chat. YouTube. Seven people, four likes. All seven people in here already should hit the like button. See, that's a damn shame. Gotta tell you, take your damn shoes off. <laughs> take your shoes off, please, before you enter the dojo. Appreciate that. That means hit the like button if you are new to the channel. So the algorithm picks this up. Let's see. I still don't see any live chat. What's a, where my live chat at? It's not showing any live chat, everybody. I don't see anybody. There we go. Jamar D, first one. Jason Rivers. Mel, what up? It's the first three I see. There we go. All right. DJ Sherm. Jolliver, 1999. Bro, L. Wise. What's up, brother? Hashim the Hashem. R.A. Thomas. Black and Silver. Jimmy the Melanated. What's up, dog? Mrs. B. Caramel Soldier. Jonathan Oakletree. Dee Dee. What's up? Melanated Brown. DMTB. What's happening? Christopher Banks, 419. What's cracking? Christopher Perkins, what's happening? He said, happy 420. What you know about that, Christopher Perkins? <laughs> I'll be happy after, I'll be, I'll be celebrating 420 a little bit later. But uh, happy 420 to the people. Salute, OG Kev, what up? To Hotel Shalom, Antonio Bryant, Richard Carr, Dwayne Hicks, Shaggy Dog, Brian Gerard, what's up? Reese, Reese that girl, James. Copper Tone Nishi. Brian Jones, what up? King Samo, I got you and spread the wealth. Canadian Kush, what's happening, y'all? What's happening to the people? So, all right, it's bringing, they bringing in the chat slow, but what's up to y'all, man? Happy Saturn's Day. Saturn's Day falls on the 420, huh? God damn it, it's all in alignment. <laughs> it's all in alignment. What up, Jay Bird? Bar Heavy J, that boy Tree. Roderick Roche, what's happening? Turkey Burger, baby. happy Turkey Burger, that's what's up. <laughs> I got you. Is that Golden Gold? That Herman Mc McKinney L? What's up, y'all? Got a lot to talk about. There's some bullshit going on, man. Did they finally do it? Did they finally start the bullshit in the world, y'all? Did we? Did, did you see what's going on? Did they finally get us into the bullshit? Because, <laughs> goddamn, it's looking like Israel is trying to get us into some bullshit. Ain't that Fariah L? Joseph McClendon, Neon Black, what's up? <laughs> El Monte. So appreciate y'all for showing up for the live stream to watch me talk some craziness. Cause that's all I'm doing. I'm talking crazy, y'all. I'm just sending y'all the information the universe sends through me. Um so people, if you ordered any police stop law packages, haven't sent it out yet. I ran out of um police or flashcards so the flashcards just got here yesterday evening so if you ordered a police stop law package yo cash out Roger enoch thank you brother for the cash out thank you for the cash out brother appreciate you Roger enoch so now i i just got the flashcards yesterday yesterday evening so i'll be mailing everything out on monday so if you haven't if you ordered last week and you didn't get your stuff, you didn't get an email that your stuff was on the way. That's because I had to wait. I ran out of materials. So I got some new materials yesterday, Thursday and yesterday. So all of your stuff will be going out on Monday. Because I'm not trying to hold on to your stuff. Ask anybody who's ordered something. If it didn't get to you, it's because somebody stole it, most likely. It's <laughs> not because I didn't send it. So appreciate you guys on that. And everybody, um, 
you want to join, you want to learn the law for free, make sure you get up again to Know Your Rights Foundation.org. That's KYRF.org. Sign up to the Know Your Rights Foundation Academy so you can get you one of these beautiful certifications. This is what we're doing. Learning the law so you can get back out there, teach it to the community because you're going to need it. And this upcoming police state is coming, y'all. You see they're shutting down in and outs all over the place and Walmart and all kind of stuff because of the crime. Not because they're not making money. They're shutting down businesses because of crime. You think they're going to keep letting that going on? No, buddy. They're going to implement some type of police state to clamp down on all you niggas. <laughs> it's all you need. And all the people, all the melanated people making it bad for all the other melanated people in the hood. So, you know, thinking that, oh, we're just going to be able to rob forever. No. So when that police state comes down, they're going to really be mashing on you. So make sure that you know how to get, uh, you know, make them pay for violating your constitutional rights about accountability. Because they're going to think that they can just do anything now because they've been letting crime run so rampant that we just need to be so crazy with with our police our enforcement that no one will mind because police has been running crime has been running rampant for so long nope mm -mm. get you one of these <laughs> certifications know your rights foundation.org make sure you sign up fill out the application um and wait for the email back the email back should be sending you to fill out uh, a questionnaire because we need to know about you just a little bit about you it's no test or anything but we do need to know who you are and then um, we set you up an interview once you fill out the questionnaire. All right, so that's how it goes. If you didn't, if you send us an email, you didn't get anything back, make sure you check your spam because a lot of times it goes to spam and people don't check it. But we always send uh, everyone back an, uh, an email who uh, hits us up for, uh, for the academy. All right, so make sure you get over there if you, haven't, if you haven't seen anything back from us. But get you one of these beautiful certifications so you can smack the trap out of these popo when they come for you because they are coming. They come and God damn it. You want to be able to do that with the sound effects and everything. <laughs> also, make sure if you if you want to support, get over to knowyourrightsfoundation.org. I mean, excuse me, realnoggers.com and order the Great Book of Melanated, the Great Book of Melanin Research. And I will give you the whole police stop law package for free. As I've been doing, people think that this and these things come together. No, when you buy the book, you're buying the book. I'm giving you this for free. I want y'all to understand this. These don't come together. You don't, when you go to the if you go to the website, you won't see these listed together because this is free. I'm giving this to you for free. So order the Great Book of Melanin Research, and you get the whole Police Stop Law package for free. That includes that includes the constitutional rights cards, constitutional right card right here, qualified immunity card, and notice. And you will also get two decks of flashcards right here. That's the law and government flash. Hopefully, where is it? That's the law and government flashcards and the police stop law flashcards. So I ran out of these, so I just got them back yesterday. So you'll be getting yours in the mail if you ordered last week. But I need your support. Make sure you keep supporting that. Appreciate you, you know, or don't, you know. But you know, some at some point in time, you're gonna have to pay some, the universe back for some of the information. So you might as well hook a brother up for bringing all this information to you. Appreciate you though. <laughs> all right, and. Oh, make sure everybody, if you want to do the cash app, thank you everybody for hitting me up on the cash app this week. If you want to learn the law, status law, meaning knowing how to change your status so that the government can't come for you in the future when they get ready to come for you, go to patreon.com slash real nagas, sign up for the status class. Oh, Vanessa K, thank you for the cash app. Appreciate you. See, cash app's coming in. Dude, donating to the turkey burger fund, I see. I appreciate all my turkey, fun, uh, my turkey burger donations. <laughs> they go to good use, I promise you. But uh, real uh, patreon.com slash real noggets if you want to sign up to the status classes, learning how to contract. That's keep one foot in the system, one foot out of the system, so that you don't really have to change your life, but the system no longer has any control or obligation over you. That's what the, you want that. You want to be able to work in the system, be balanced, have one foot in, one foot out, so when they finally come for you, then you can basically tell them to kick rocks because you severed all of your contracts with the system so that's what i do i teach you how to contract because you're you're in a corporation and you're going to be joint they're going to they're trying to merge multiple corporations or world corporations so it's going to be one giant conglomerate so how do you fight back against one world corporation you need to know how to contract so get over there again to patreon.com slash real nuggets sign up to one of the patreon 
the uh, status class levels at the highest level, I will give you the paperwork for free. All right, because I need a law army out here because it's coming. Appreciate y'all. Then last thing, make sure you get out there and you support the homie Timmy Tight Top. He came through with the juices. Thank you, Timmy Tight Top, baby. Appreciate you, brother. Was going to have to send out a search party for you, boy. You didn't bring these juices through. <laughs> but uh, right here, we got the tropical pear. This is one of the, 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 the sweet ones. The, you got a lot of sweet ones and a lot of ones to clean you out. So, But this is one of the sweet ones. This is pineapple, pear, apple, ginger, and mint off the chain. And then this is strawberry lemonade. He didn't put the he didn't, he didn't put the label on here, but it's off the chain. God dang it. I know it has uh, strawberries, strawberry lemon, I think a little mint in here. So a little pear juice in there to sweeten it up a little bit. Then he bought the King of Kings. The surprisingly sweet. Boy, you know I was gonna I was boy, you wasn't gonna even get inside the gate. If you didn't bring this damn drink. <laughs> so appreciate you, brother. This is surprisingly sweet. Grapefruit, cantaloupe, and pear. The best one he got right here. And then if you're trying to cleanse, right here, this is the apple zang. This is one of the cleansers. This is apple, cucumber, mint, and ginger. Help flush you out. So make sure if you wanna, if you wanna get hook up with any of those juices. Also, these are these are uh this is a turmeric shot. These are these are cleansers. These are also blood cleansers right here. This is a turmeric shot. This is a strawberry blood cleanser right here. So you want to hook those up. Make sure you call them. Oops. At 323-864-4425. Again, 323-864-4425. He said his website will be up shortly. He had a legal problem trying to get his website up. Somebody was attacking him and all the rest of that. So... He had to work that out, so now he can get his website back. He should be getting it up in the next couple of weeks. So uh, right now, you just need to text him if you want some of those delicious juices. But in the next couple of weeks, his website will be back up. So appreciate you, Timmy Tight Top. All right, everybody. Let's get into it. So starting off in illegal immigrant news. Got to section off the news now because it's so much different news. We got to section it off. So in illegal immigrant news. <laughs> so did you hear that uh, a National Guardsman shot an illegal immigrant at the border? So it's getting it's starting to get hyped up. So but the illegal immigrant was stabbing people. The illegal immigrant at the border, he had a knife. And he was stabbing people. <laughs> he just going around stabbing up people. Like, that's just the thing to do. And uh, so the guardsman shot him. <laughs> he didn't kill him, though. He didn't kill him, though. Now, if it was me, I probably would have took him out. You just can't be stabbing people thinking this is this is how it's going down. <laughs> I'm just about to be stabbing people right on the border, nigga. And, you know... Ain't nothing you gonna do about it, nah. So shout out to that that border patrolman who put a cap in his ass. <laughs> you, nigga, keep that shit in your country, nigga. You can't come over here at the border just be stabbing up people, nigga. Cause nigga, uh, uh, pop the cap right on his ass. So, but it's getting uh, so it's getting crazy. They starting to shoot. So when they start shooting, the border becomes hostile. Then what happens? Do they raid the border? Do the illegal immigrants just start raiding the border like they did before? And then we got to shoot them. Then not we, because I ain't wouldn't. But the American government, <laughs> the American corporation, got to shoot them cats up at the, at the, uh, at the border. And then you're gonna have an international situation once that happens. So tensions are riled up, and then so you know you got the the, the. Uh, groups who are caping for the illegal immigrants calling foul saying there's no way you should you shouldn't be shooting people you didn't know you how how did you know that he had the knife because he's sitting there watching this nigga stab people bitch <laughs> that's how he knew what the fuck are you talking about how you know he the one with the goddamn knife i just watched this nigga stab like a bunch of people bitch i ain't waiting on you to tell me i can shoot this nigga so Illegal immigrants is getting crazy because then in New York, they stormed the New York City, uh, New York City Hall 
the illegal, like thousand illegal immigrants stormed New York City Hall and demanded green cards. We demand green cards. We demand work. You need to put us to work. Wait, how the fuck do you come over here <laughs> illegally, knowingly illegally, because you paid a goddamn traffic mule to get your ass here? <laughs> you paid a traffic mule to get you here. Then when your ass get here, you think you're just supposed to roll up and just start getting jobs? What the fuck? They stormed. <laughs> they fucking stormed the goddamn city hall and asked for fucking green cards and said, then it says a, bu a bunch of them were African. So a bunch of the illegal immigrants who stormed city hall was a bunch of Africans and they were claiming uh, racism and xenophobia. <laughs> they were claiming that they were being racist. They were getting... They were racism was being committed against them and xenophobia, meaning because they were from Africa, they're being treated worse as immigrants than anybody else. Because they black and they from Africa. But it's a bunch of niggas from Haiti and all kind of it's a whole bunch of melanated people. But you specifically, you nigga from Africa that we can't tell the difference between any of you niggas. <laughs> <laughs> we can't tell who the fuck is from where. But specifically, you African motherfuckers, we're discriminating against you niggas because we don't want to give you jobs. Then they said, uh, stop playing. Give us the jobs. This dude got in the street. This nigga had a bullhorn. This nigga, the nerve of this nigga. <laughs> this legal immigrant, this nigga got a bullhorn standing on the sidewalk pleading his case. We're here to do the jobs Americans don't want to do. Give us the give us the right to work. We want to work so we can pay and do the system. Give us the right to work. No, wait a minute, nigga. It's a bunch of niggas over here who want to work. It's a bunch of niggas over here who want to work. Why are you supposed to jump the line to get work over anybody else who been waiting and needing to get fed? So what they say is they're here to do the jobs that Nick that Melanated people and Hispanics over here don't want to do. First off, nigga, uh, you, you ever met a Mexican nigga? Mexicans will do any damn job. <laughs> Physi work physical job, I mean. They all, they all, they work. Them motherfucking Mexicans are the hardest working people you ever met in your life, nigga. So that ain't that. That ain't. <laughs> that's not a real thing. So, but what's gonna happen is why would so you you see they're trying to raise the they're trying to raise the minimum wage to $15 nationally, right? They're trying to raise it to $15 nationally. They just raised it to $20 an hour in California like two weeks ago, right? So that's pretty high. Now, if you have the illegal immigrants who are coming over here and they say, fuck that, we'll work for $7 an hour, which seven dollars an hour, eight dollars an hour is way more money than they was making in they land. They was probably making like two dollars an hour, three dollars an hour where they was from. So you gonna pay these niggas seven to eight dollars an hour? They like hell yeah, nigga. <laughs> like give me fucking eight dollars an hour. So then the businesses will just stop hiring Americans and then bringing in the illegal immigrants on the low. And not having to pay taxes. Leah, appreciate you. Thank you for the, uh, the super chat. Thank everybody who hit the super chat and the cash apps. So then that's going to drive, that's going to drive wages down. But because of that, because of the low wages that they get, that's going to make everything fucked up for everybody else. That's going to drive price. That's going to drive housing and and merchandise, all of that, that's going to drive all those prices out of control. Because you've given the illegal immigrants jobs and they don't pay into the taxes. So if you just get them jobs and you pay them on the low, because they're not going to sign them into, they're not going to sign them in. Really, they're not going to, so what's, what's, they want to work because, not so they can pay taxes, they want the, they want the permit so that if they get checked on, they can say, oh, I'm legal. 
but not necessarily that they can, when they get hired, they're going to be filling out tax paperwork and shit and paying it to No, these niggas going to hire them. They're going to hire them on the low and just pay them under the table. So they were, they storm city hall demanding that they take your jobs. Then the uppity <laughs> illegal immigrants, <laughs> some uppity ass illegal immigrants, they refused free food. They refused, they refused free food because what they say it, uh, but during, um, yo, Audrey, oh, excuse me, Andre, proud, sorry about that. Andre, appreciate you, brother. Thank you. So it was Ramadan and they said the food wasn't halal, which is according to, you know, Muslim got to be hooked up the proper way, <laughs> right? Got to be clean. The food need to be clean. So it wasn't halal. So they said, we don't want the free food. We can't eat it. But your ass is out here starving. And you don't, you trying to talk about nigga, you better get the fuck out of here with your goddamn religion, nigga. <laughs> nigga, when that fuckers who broke can't be religious, motherfucker. You need to pick one. <laughs> That's how that shit work, nigga. Niggas who broke, you can't be religious and broke, nigga, talking about, nah, nigga, it ain't kosher. What if you Jewish, nigga, talking about, nah, you can't touch my meats and my, my meats and my, and my dairies can't go to, on the same plate. Nigga, you better get the fuck out of here, eat this goddamn, <laughs> eat this fucking, what's on this plate. They done lost their damn mind. Up in, you know why that is, though? Because they were promised. See, this is the thing, why you necessarily can't fully blame them. You can and you can't because they know they're supposed to come. There's a there's a legal way for them to come over here, but they're not doing that. But the reason you necessarily can't blame them because you got a bunch of Biden administration people and organizations telling them how to come over here, what to do. You can get amnesty. Uh, you know, if you just say this, once you get to the border, um, telling them once you get to America, they're going to hook you up. You're going to be taken care of once you get to America. You just need to get there and cross the border. That's going to be the hardest part. But once you get there, you're going to be in the, you're going to be in the promised land. You you just like reaching the leprechaun of the the pot of gold. With the leprechaun, you did, you kidnap the leprechaun and force that nigga to tell you where the leprechaun land was. Hey nigga, where the where the, where the gold at, bitch? Huh? <laughs> My lucky charms. My lucky charms. No, where the fucking lucky charms at, bitch? <laughs> so they motherfucking they done jacked us for the lucky charms they came over here and they got us for our lucky charms and then they being uppity about it saying that we ain't we not accepting food <laughs> unless that shit is halal bitch you better, i'll shove these lucky charms up your ass motherfucker your immigrant ass bitch <laughs> and send you kick you back to motherfucker where the fuck you came from you better get the fuck out of here with your uppity ass I don't know what the hell they teaching you in your country. Nigga, you came from a place, nigga, where you motherfucking got wood. You you use wood for fucking, for for <laughs> for money, nigga. You, <laughs> you got wooden coins and shit, nigga. Now you fucking worried about food? Nigga, get the hell out of here. These niggas use seashells for fucking, <laughs> for money. <laughs> nigga, you got seashell money where you from, nigga. You talking about, you talking about, it's not halal, bitch. <laughs> so then, uh, so they said their right, their their rights are being violated. <laughs> their rights are being violated. The immigrants. First off, nigga, you don't have any rights over here. You don't have constitutional rights. Let me say that you have human rights, but they're treating you like a human. They're, the human right is only the human right that you have, nigga, is to remain alive and be treated humanely. But if you come and you overload the system, knowing that you do it, knowing that you're doing that, then then you've basically conceded to whatever care that you get. If you know you coming over here and you know that it's a bunch of thousands and millions of y'all coming over here and it's already millions of people in the system that's already over here, you can't come over here and just think you're going to come take out of the system before anybody else. And your rights are violated if you don't get what the hell you want <laughs> over here. Get the fuck out of here. Just your bougie fucking immigrant ass, nigga. 
So I don't know how the hell you can be an immigrant crossing motherfucking five countries, nigga. Dodging alligators, nigga. <laughs> nigga eating spiders, nigga, for dinner at night. The motherfucker now, your ass is, you want to get over here talking about shit ain't halal? <laughs> nigga, you better go back to eating spiders then, bitch. So, and then they mad. And then Chicago's mad because Chicago mayor is giving $70 million more. They just signed this new thing in the law where they're going to give $70 million more dollars to the illegal immigrants. Last name first. Thank you. Appreciate you, brother. So the Chicago citizens was out. Cra they went crazy on him. Go watch the meeting that they did. It was two days ago. The, the city council meeting. Them Chicago people ripped that fool a new one. <laughs> he was up there. He had to take it, too. <laughs> he was just up there just taking it. They ripped him a new one. You whack as hell. You a corrupt ass. I mean, they got at him. We voting you out. They all got up there with MAGA hats and shit. <laughs> they said, your ass is out, bitch. $70 million. They're taking money from community centers. They're shutting community centers down. They couldn't hold. They can't hold uh, children's events like soccer games because the illegal immigrants are taking over the fields. The soccer. The, they had a soccer game out there. And they had to call the soccer game because the illegal immigrants refused to leave the field. So they are disrupting life, every fabric of way of life in America, thinking it's still going to be America. You come, over, you come over here because you want to be part of America, but you're going to rip apart everything that makes America, America. You're just going to go against the rules and bring your bullshit from where you from over here and reestablish that? Hell no. That's why your punk, that's why you running from your bitch ass country, nigga. <laughs> that's why you over here. Don't bring your bullshit here. So, seventy million dollars, and there's a bunch of homeless people and veterans that ain't getting nothing in Chicago. So I feel for you, Chicago people, but you're not the only ones because New York is fucked off too. So moving along. In New Kazarian news, <laughs> so Iran launched, but since I've seen you, since last week, uh, it happened while we were on the air last week. Remember, Iran launched miss launched a missile strike at uh, New Kazaria, Israel, right? So we didn't know that we didn't know the the. Uh, you know, details of what went down <clears throat> last week because we were on the air. It was happening as we were on the air. So 300 missiles, Iran launched 300 missiles. Yo, when you get this, yo, my moderators kick this dude out here, gang stalking simulation. What are you doing? What you putting up in here, man? Don't put no crazy ass shit up in here. Delete that. <laughs> uh talking to whoever my mother christopher perkins you got somebody delete with that with any of these messages up in here we're not trying to get the damn thank you trying to get the chat shut down so um they launched 300 missiles they launched 300 missiles thank you appreciate you so they launched 300 missiles at at israel right because israel blew up the consulate in syria Right, Damascus and Syria, and so Israel's uh, reason for blowing up the consulate was that there was a Hamas leader in the consulate. Excuse me, there was a Hamas leader who was co uh, coordinating strikes against the IDF in Gaza, so that was their reason for blowing up. Excuse me, the consulate building. In Damascus, all right, we we got to get we got to take out the Hamas dude, but killed a bunch of civilians who didn't have nothing to do with what's going on in Gaza, right? So <clears throat> now, when they did that, that was against Geneva Convention. That was basically a war crime that they did. When you, you can't just blow up a goddamn embassy in a damn in a country that you're not officially at war with. You're at war in Palestine, not Iran. Conceptual elixirs. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you always showing me love in the chat. 
So that's a that's a war crime. That would be the equivalent because when they say that's okay for them to do that, what if somebody from Hamas was in a hotel in Washington D.C. Just say that just 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 to, as a scenario, what if a what if a Hamas leader had basically just come to America and he was staying at a hotel or something in Washington D.C. Can they take out the hotel in D.C. because there's one Hamas leader there? No, you can't do that shit. You can't do that. If you can't do that and shoot by shooting, you can't do that in, in Iran either. So that was their justification. So Iran shot back 300 missiles at him. Right? But Iran wasn't really trying to shoot any missiles at him because they gave him 72 hours advance notice. This started to come out. They gave him 72 hour advance notice. They called America and everybody told them where the missiles, where they was going to shoot the missiles. <laughs> exact time they was going to shoot the missiles. How many missiles they was going to shoot. So basically Iran was like, look, we just can't let y'all strike us and us not do anything. Right. So they had to do a show of force. But Iran doesn't want to start a world war because they know New Kazaria is trying to start a world war or Netanyahu anyway. Netanyahu is trying to start a world war, right? So Iran is doing everything they can to prevent Israel. They keep Israel keep poking the bear, keep provoking them because they know America is is Debo standing behind them, talking about what you got on my what you <laughs> what you got on my shit. Y'all know Debo. Debo walk up, nigga, tell me what you got on my war, homie. So that's why New Kazaria keeps poking the bear Iran but Iran actually has better weapons they have to have they have more weapons and better weapons they have supersonic missiles so the missiles they shot at Israel took a long at they were cruise missiles they the oldest missiles that Iran has <laughs> they the oldest damn missiles Iran had they like, nigga, we gonna clear out nigga, uh, throw that old at yeah yeah, yeah that shit's like 20 years old yeah, 30, yeah, yeah. shoot them at them motherfuckers yeah we don't need that shit no more just to show them how <laughs> we're going to shoot our old shit at you. And some of the missiles still got through and hit the base, right? <laughs> so basically what they were also doing was testing the Iron Dome defense system. Because Iran had never made a direct strike at Israel from Iran. So with this, they said, all right, we can test the Iron Dome defense system and see how y'all really take out how you guys take out missiles in the air, right? So that's what this was. That was a test. But some of the missiles still got through. So even though Iran told them what was going to happen, they shot down 99% of the missiles. Israel, or New Kazaria, they act like they got to put their chest out. And they say, all right, we're going to strike back. Well, Iran was like, look, nigga, it's over, homie. Y'all shot, y'all hit us. You killed a bunch of our people. We could have killed a bunch of your niggas, but... We didn't do that. Take this as a win or whatever you want to take it as, but we good. This shit is over between, as far as we concerned, this shit is over, right? So, dumbass Netanyahu, he wants to still start a fucking war. Because he knows, because what happened was, uh, Biden supposedly called Netanyahu and said, look, if you do an offensive strike, don't expect America to join the, to join the fight with you. And Netanyahu was like, yeah, all right, yeah, nigga. Whatever, nigga. <laughs> what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. What'd you say, Biden? Huh? Don't do nothing? Yeah. <laughs> so that's what he was doing while he was listening <laughs> to Biden, right? So then, yo, pick these people up out of here who talking this bullshit, this gay shit. Michael Oxling, Oxlong. Yo, who's my, yo... Leo, Leo Fire and Christopher Perkins. I know y'all on hard duty today, but kick these, erase these niggas. Talk here. Thank you. Talking that bullshit. Appreciate you. So, um, so Iran, so like I said, Iran was like, yeah, we good. Don't do nothing. Netanyahu, he can't let it lag. He can't let it stand. He wants to poke the bear and start a war. So, he shot missiles uh, two nights ago. Friday, was it Friday? Thursday night, basically Friday morning. He shot missiles into Iran to start some shit. 
So now everybody waiting to see what Iran is going to do. Because if Iran strikes Israel back, then they got supersonic missiles. They told Iran told them, nigga, don't do nothing or we going to hit you. Like Mike Tyson next time, bitch. <laughs> Basically, that's what he told him. Nigga, you, you do something this time, we're going to hit your ass like Mike Tyson, bitch. So Netanyahu said, you see Debo right there, nigga? You see Debo right there? <laughs> Name America? American Debo? You ain't going to do shit if we launch a missile at you, bitch. So Netanyahu launched another missile. But apparently it didn't hit anything. So Iran is basically saying, they like, yeah, they shot some missiles over here, but it didn't hit nothing. So our missile defense system took most of, they were, both, they were basically only drones. We took them out before, before they could do any damage. Maybe one landed or something like that. But basically nothing happened. No, no civilians hurt, no people hurt. So, all right. Israel, bitch ass niggas. Take this one and, and walk away. <laughs> That's what it's saying. So now, see, if Israel, see, this is what Iran is doing. Iran wants to, they trying to hold off as much as possible. No matter how much they hate Israel, they trying to hold off as much as possible because if Israel keeps poking and pushing, they look like the bad guys, right? If they keep on attacking Iran, <laughs> And, uh, and doing it when Iran is not provoking them and not even when they retaliate, they're not even retaliating to the level that Israel is attacking. So it makes Israel constantly look like the bad people. Nukazarians look like the bad guys, right? So that's good on Iran. That's a strategy Iran is using. But um, Netanyahu bitch <laughs> is going to keep on poking the bear. Because he wants to get America, he trying to fulfill some type of pro prophecy where he thinks if he starts the world war in the Middle East between the uh, the Muslims and the Jews, that that's going to bring back the Messiah and all this and that type of shit. This is, this is what this nigga believe. He on some crazy, crazy shit. He was, he was kicking it with some crazy rabbi who told him, that it was his job to bring back to bring about the Messiah and the 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 fall or whatever the the the, the second coming or whatever the hell that shit is called. <laughs> that nigga's supposed to bring it back. This this rabbi told him that, so he's on this crazy shit right now. Somebody got to get that bitch ass nigga out of here. <laughs> Seriously. So then it came out that uh, Israel or New Kazaria. They were blocking a U.N. commission from investigating the October 7th attack because they let this shit happen on purpose. Allegedly, they let it happen on purpose so they can institute this world war. This is Netanyahu. He let this shit happen on purpose. So he was like, we're going to investigate October 7th when the war is over. And so people are like, nah, nigga, we can do we can we can walk and chew gum at the same time, nigga. <laughs> what the fuck, nigga? <laughs> I can tap my foot, nigga, and eat at the same time, nigga. I don't need to. All right, nigga, you can go do the war. The UN is like, we'll do the investigation then, nigga. All right. And so Israel is like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, nigga, no, 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 no. Hold on till the war is over. And they like, nah, nigga, go ahead and do your war. We're going to go over here and investigate that October 7th shit, right? And see what really happened. So Israel is blocking the UN from investigating October 7th. Why? Because they know it was all planned. No one can find out. They're going to block it and block it and block it and block it till everybody forgets about, you know, the why October 7th actually happened, why it failed, why Israel failed, the new Kazarians failed. And look at this shit. Look at how crazy this shit is. Niggas was able to fly in on October 7th on parachutes <laughs> hang nigga paraglide nigga with big ass paramotors and shit the paramotors loud you can hear it that's the motor on the back and shit they they can fly in you know how long it take you to land on a paramotor <laughs> but they can shoot down 320 missiles over their sky right with no problem 
They can shoot down 320 missiles <laughs> that's launched at them, but you can't hit motherfuckers flying in on parachutes like, shh, oh, uh, <laughs> nigga. They are so full of shit. They want people to believe this bullshit. So, no one believes it that you can take you can you have that type of capability, but you can't take out niggas flying in in parachutes over your over the city. Okay. So they said the reason they stopped the UN investigation would be was because the UN has a history of being anti-Semitic. Here we go again. <laughs> Everything that they don't want, anti-Semitic. Anti-Semitic. You're anti-Semitic. So the UN, the United Nations, who basically, New Kazaria runs the United Nations, they said they have a history of being anti-Semitic. That's how, this is how they stop you, stop the narrative. <laughs> Nigga, you can't look into it. You can't look into this investigation. That's anti-Semitic. How dare you doubt what we say happened on October 7th. We told you what happened. They flew in here. They killed a bunch of babies. They raped a bunch of women. You believe that, don't you? You supposed to believe it? The fuck, nigga? <laughs> you supposed to believe me, nigga? What the fuck, nigga? I got a history of telling you something, and you supposed to believe it. What the fuck is going on, nigga? What the hell? <laughs> what the fucking hell, nigga? So... They in a new place where nobody's believing New Kazaria right now. They don't know what's happening. But this, like I said, it's the beginning of the end of them being the perpetual victims of the world. See, they're trying to bring about this, the chosen people, the Messiah's coming back for the chosen people and all that. That's what Netanyahu's trying to bring about. Nah, you ain't the chosen nothing. You chosen to be exposed in this new age, this new air age. We're in the we're the age of exposure, information, consciousness. You can't get away with the same bullshit in this time. So, so I got to say <laughs> to the new Kazarian government because, and then they don't also they don't it also came out in the in the newspaper in the uh, Israeli newspaper, new Kazarian newspaper that. They knew about the attack a whole year in advance. They knew about the attack a whole year in advance and didn't do nothing. Now, they said the reason they didn't do anything was because they didn't believe that Hamas had the capability. It was credible. The information that they got was credible. They didn't believe that Hamas had the capability of carrying out that type of attack. <laughs> Nigga, they right next door to you with parachutes and all this type of shit. So you don't prepare for that at all. You have that, you have that, the blueprint. They have the whole plan a year in advance. <laughs> but we're not going to plan for nothing. That's why they don't want the investigation, UN doing an investigation on October 7th, because that's going to come out about why didn't you do anything when you had to plan a whole year in advance. Also, it's been proven that it was bullshit about no women were raped. There was no babies' heads cut off and killed other than like collateral damage when they were trying to kill uh, a, a, an adult and, a, and um, a baby, a child was with the adult. They didn't kill, they didn't arbitrarily go around killing kids. So all that came out, and this was the Israeli newspapers who reported that stuff as being false. So your own newspapers over there saying you full of shit, basically. So then the New York Times over here, they're the ones. So you got is New Kazarian newspapers telling the truth. And then the American newspapers, New, the New York Times, who's run by, who's owned by New Kazarians. <laughs> so you got to We got to understand the New York Times is owned by New Kazarians. So. It came out that New York Times was caught in an internal memo manipulating journalist language in favor of New Kazarian victims instead of Palestinian victims. So this is what came out. As a journalist of the New York Times, yo, Demarcus Oliver, appreciate you. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 
So as a New York journalist, the New York Times, excuse me, as a New York Times journalist, they were telling their journalists they can't say these things, which you're not supposed to tell the journalist how to speak at all. If you're telling your journalist how to speak, then it's fake news. So this is what they told them. You can't say Palestine. You can't say genocide. You can't say refugee camp. You can't say occupied territories. You can't say carnage. You can't say slaughter and you can't say massacre. Yo, Brandon Terry, thank you for the cash out, brother. Appreciate it. Turkey burger is going to be good. Chicken shawarma, turkey burger, chicken shawarma. Turkey burger, yeah. Wow, game time decision. <laughs> but appreciate your contribution. <laughs> uh, you can't say any of those things. You can't say the word Palestine. New York Times journalists were told not to say Palestine. What the fuck? <laughs> That's absolute censorship. That's absolute censorship. Battle axe, you got that right. Full of shit censorship. <laughs> New, York, New York Times, how is anybody supposed to trust you? And you're telling, you're telling your reporters that they can say all of those things about if the, what the Hamas did to the New Kazarians on October 7th, you can say all of those things. You can say, you can say carnage, slaughter, massacre. You can say all of that. <laughs> if you're saying it was Hamas doing that to the New Kazarians, <laughs> you can absolutely say that. But if you say the New Kazarians are doing that to... Pal uh, no, hey, nigga, hey, oh, hey. Slow it down, baby. <laughs> oh, hey, don't you want to check them words? Check them words. Don't you want to... Don't you got a, uh, what's that book called? A thesaurus? Don't you got one there? Won't you look in your thesaurus and won't you, uh, match that word up with something else? <laughs> like, it's a better word for that. <laughs> I promise you. Look in your thesaurus. But ain't that, what, ain't that how you say it? A, th a, th a thesaurus? Because <laughs> you know that a lot of you niggas get tongue-tied on that damn word. But, uh, <laughs> look in your damn book and, and create another word. But you can say it again for new Kazarian victims. <laughs> Looking at the thought. So that's what New York Times <laughs> is telling the, the journalists. They need to use their thesaurus <laughs> a little more. Just, just use it a little bit more. It, it's, it's a little dusty. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of words in there you can use besides these words. Just saying. So, again, the New York Times is full of shit. Just like the new Kazarian government is full of shit. And then it showed that uh, a report came out that showed that the politicians who own stock in these companies, in these military companies, these military, um, you know, these arm, armory companies like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin and all these companies, excuse me, they just came out, their their financial reports just came out and it showed that they they clean enough. The pop, the, the uh, like Nancy Pelosi and all these cats, they got stock in these companies, which is, should be illegal right off the bat. You should not be able to have stock in companies that lobby you for legislation, for laws. That's just blatant corruption, which is why the whole country is on full of shit. You have blatant corruption and can't nobody do shit about it. A politician is able to goddamn invest in a stock that they get money from the goddamn company to create laws for, in favor of. And nobody is questioning that shit. <laughs> nobody questions that shit. Blatant, straight up corruption. So came out, they, they cleaning up off the, off the wars. So that's why you're not going to see uh, a let up on them trying to fund those wars because all that money is recycled back to the politician, American politicians. So moving along, in government news, we got government news. Uh, in the new in the bill to renew the FISA, I talked about the bill last week 
to renew the FISA court, right? That's the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance, uh, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, right? FISA, Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. That that was put into the Patriot Act. When they created the Patriot Act, they put that in there and they was able to spy on Americans at home, sort of, right? If they supposedly had... So when it first came out, they were just able to do anything. They was able to spy on Americans regardless. And 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 they just was... What the niggas saying? Huh? Oh, you... Nigga, all right, you want to, you want to, oh, he's just going to get the burger? Okay, shit. <laughs> like, nigga, they was listening to them niggas' orders. Yeah, give me two, yeah, give me two number sevens uh, with a bunch with some fries and, and, the, and, the, and the, the strawberry punch. Mm -hmm. they, they was listening in on that. They were listening in on all your calls. <laughs> they was like, God damn, that sounds good. Hey, hey, Rob, uh, can you order us some? <laughs> they were listening in on every damn thing when, they, when the Patriot Act first came out. Then there was a backlash against that. So they came out, they put a little restrictions in it, and they said, okay, you can only survey Americans if they have contact with foreign suspected terrorists or agents, foreign agents, suspected agents, right? Or, you know, if they're in a foreign, if they're in a foreign country and they're suspected of having contact with a foreign, uh, I mean, with a, uh, yeah, foreign hostile. So that's what they put in there, right? So that was, then they have to renew that. It was supposed to be like every three years, I think they were had to renew that clause, the FISA clause. So then now they took it down. So now it was supposed to be renewed. It was set, it was coming up for renewal last week. And so they renewed it. And so they, they, uh, it's called, in the FISA bill, it's called Section 702 of the Patriot Act, right? So, what they didn't tell us in the seven in Section 702, when they said, "Okay, we're not going to spy on Americans. We're only going to spy on Americans if you have foreign, you know, if you have foreign contact with foreigner, foreign uh, hostile agents or whatever, right? That's that's the bullshit they tell them on the surface." Look what this shit allows them to do, though. They slipped that shit on in there. See, they don't let anybody read these bills. They slid that on in there, and boom, they passed it on the low. So it says, uh, the seven hundred two of the, the seven, uh, section seven hundred two of the Patriot Act. It was buried. <clears throat> it was a section buried, or section seven hundred two was buried in the Patriot Act, and it basically gives. The NSA expansion in surveillance over the American people. The new bill allows the NSA to take over the internet in America, basically. Shit is over. This new bill, section 702 that they slipped in there, allows the NSA to basically take over the internet, y'all. Now, I don't know if it's fully signed yet. I don't know if, they, if the Senate still has to do it, but I think they they passed they passed it. But uh, so this is what it this is what this is what happens in it. Businesses are forced are forced to aid the NSA in surveillance of American people. So no, it hasn't passed yet. So if the bill passes, any company or individual that provides any service whatsoever may be forced to assist the NSA surveillance, in, excuse me, the assist in, <clears throat> excuse me, assist in NSA surveillance as long as they have access to equipment on which communications are transmitted or stored, such as routers, servers, and cell towers. So what does that mean? So basically, if you go to the library, and you use the library's Wi-Fi, they can go to the library and get the Wi-Fi and get the Wi-Fi information off the library and search and basically take you and search your information. If you go to the barbershop and you use the barbershop's Wi-Fi, they can go to the barbershop and make the barbershop give over your information from the Wi-Fi. If you go anywhere that has a private Wi-Fi, or you communicate in any type of way on their type of on their on their communication service, 
the NSA can go to that company and make them give the NSA your information. This is what set this is in section 702 of the Patriot Act thing. That's crazy. <laughs> That's absolutely now. No one knew this. Again, this is why they bury that shit deep down into the bills. When nobody reads the bill in the first place, most people are just able to scan the first, what, five or ten pages because they put it out ten minutes before the bill got to be voted on. This is shady shit all the way around. There's no way you're trying to do good for America if you're passing a thousand laws that no one gets a chance to read. That has to get passed in the next 10 minutes. You're obviously trying to get some shady fuck shit across. Only shady people do that. Don't want you to see what the hell they're doing. No one who's on the up and up is trying to hide anything. They'd be happy for you to see that shit. Then you want to see everything? Come on, nigga. It's all right here, nigga. Hey, look. What, you, what else you want, nigga? Want me to go get it? I got more shit back there. I got shit at the house. I got shit, nigga. I got shit in the locker. Want me to go to the home? Want me to go to the storage? I got shit in there, too. If you on the up and up, <laughs> you happy to bring about all the receipts. It's only when you are on the fuck shit that you're trying to hide everything. So, yo, again, get these comments out of here. This Chris Cumin, get these comments out of here so they don't yeah, keep the uh, the chat clean. Keep that bullshit out of here, please. So, uh, thank you. Appreciate it. So then, moving along, as that's going on, the House just passed a $95 billion foreign aid bill. $95 billion foreign aid bill. So, does America, again, just like it sounds, it's a foreign aid bill. We don't get none. No, America gets no money. No money for the border. <laughs> no money for, for homeless people. No money for shit. So $60 billion goes to Ukraine. Excuse me. Is it 60? Yes, yeah, 60 billion. They've been trying to get Ukraine money for the last four, five goddamn months. And the Republicans been kicking that shit at, kicking that shit back. Nope, nope, nope. Then they hired the new Speaker of the House. And he was like, nope, nope, nope. Then the Speaker got, the, the CIA called the Speaker into a secret meeting. This is, this really, this really happened, y'all. The CIA, he kept saying, he kept voting no and not letting a bill on Ukraine pass. He's like, we not gonna fund Ukraine, bitch. Even though he wants to fund He's a Zionist and he wants to fund Israel. But all the other Republicans are not going to let him tie the Israel bill to Ukraine. Right. So they kept and he doesn't want he wasn't going to do it either. He kept we're not going to fund Ukraine. CIA called that nigga into the secret meeting. One meeting <laughs> for about what about an hour. That nigga came out. We got to send we got to send Ukraine 60 billion dollars immediately. We have to send Ukraine money right now. We should have did it yesterday. What the fuck? They need that money immediately. <laughs> he been talking crazy though for the last five months since he's got elected as the House Speaker. We not sending Ukraine shit. Nope, uh, nope, nope. They ain't getting no money. One meeting <laughs> with the CIA in the damn room and that nigga was like, oh shit, nigga, we need all the money for Ukraine we get. Now, everybody knows that Ukraine is, is bullshit. Sending money to Ukraine is bullshit. These niggas got no chance of winning. They are not a democracy. It's a proxy. We're all of this shit. We know that, right? The money just going to the goddamn military industrial complex to make more money off of weapons. So what did they have on Mike Johnson? The CIA have on Mike Johnson. But this nigga flipped in two seconds. This nigga didn't even give up a guy. He didn't give up a little fight. They brought that nigga in the room. <laughs> that nigga was like, oh, uh, what else you need? You need me to clean your house? What you need, huh? <laughs> what you, what you what, I, whatever you need. They had some shit on that nigga. Whatever the CIA had on. Now, I think, 
<laughs> I think they had some shit on his son. Because, you know, I talked about this a while ago. He got a black son, a melanated son. If y'all don't, if y'all don't remember me talking about that, the Speaker of the House, the third in line for the presidency, Mike Johnson, super Christian Mormon. This nigga got a melanated son that they adopted, right? <laughs> Him and his wife. Now, the melanated son is almost their age. <laughs> The melanated son is almost their age. And the melanated son has been arrested multiple times for selling weed, smoking weed, and beating people's asses with, with, uh, with brass knuckles. He, he's gotten arrested for beating motherfuckers up with brass knuckles. So, I think <laughs> he, done, he done done way more dirt then anybody knows. That's just the shit he got caught for. If you was caught selling weed and doing all that type of shit, I think the son was in way more shit than Mike Johnson and them knew. And the CIA has been watching that nigga. And they bought him in the room and said, you see what your son been doing, bitch? Huh? <laughs> Look at this right here. They start running off pictures. Look at this. Uh-huh. Look at this. <laughs> uh -huh. Look at this. Oh, wait, I got to turn it like this. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, now look at this. <laughs> oh, she got to turn it. Maybe, oh, damn, he doing something. <laughs> they started pulling out all the pictures. Or, this is, the other, this is my other theory. <laughs> this is my other theory, y'all. Tell me if I'm. Because the son, the melanated son, is damn near the same age as the Mike Johnson and his wife. Now, Mike Johnson's wife, you look at, go look at some pictures of Mike Johnson's wife, she wasn't half bad. <laughs> so, did they adopt a melanated kid or adult to bring into their crib to have a couple of three? I'm just saying. <laughs> Are they getting freaky in there? And then the CIA found that shit out and was like, hey, nigga, we know you doing freaky shit with your supposed son. You having a little... <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just spitballing. <laughs> Yo, Transcendental, appreciate you. He says, Dems cut the house speaker. Says, in on, in on his, in on this shit. Yep. He changed too quickly, and Ukraine is only their trash pot. Yep. He changed quick as shit, didn't he? That's why I think the CIA has something on his son. Either something on illegally his son is doing, or the son used to join the Mike Johnson and his wife for some extracurricular Christian... Uh, <laughs> praising. <laughs> We're going to praise Jesus in the bed. <laughs> Let's praise God with the black uh with the black penis. <laughs> We're going to praise God for the black penis. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. That's kind of that's kind of weird to me that motherfucker <laughs> you you adopt a kid that's damn near your age and you got a nice looking wife. And they and now y'all all live in the same house together. <laughs> and this nigga's a street nigga. He not like some prissy prep school melanated dude. He from the street. <laughs> so I'm just saying. <laughs> what they have on you, Mike Johnson. It's kind of uh suspicious, Mike Johnson. You just flip like that. <laughs> so they voted on uh so they basically the bill, the money will go sixty billion to Ukraine, fifteen billion to Israel, and the rest to Taiwan. Right? So and the rest is going to Taiwan. And then the other bill they 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 want to pass, they put up for passing is the bill to ban TikTok. Because they're trying to get TikTok out of here because all the people on TikTok is showing what's going on in Nukazaria. 
So they're putting out all those videos about what's going on in New Kazaria and TikTok or the New Kazarian. They don't want that shit. <clears throat> That's why they're trying to get is uh um uh, what's his name? Elon out of here. So your government is with the bullshit. That's it for government news. All right, moving along. In everyday bullshit news, I, I couldn't, I didn't know what else to call it. So in everyday bullshit news, uh, there's a new book coming out. There's a new book coming out that says the biggest problem in America is now anti-white racism and discrimination. The biggest problem in America is anti-white <laughs> anti-white racism and discrimination. Goddamn. Yo, what the hell's going on up in here? This is some crazy shit. How do these, all these crazy motherfuckers get up in my damn live stream? Appreciate all my mods for being quick on the draw if they tripping. But, uh, and if you're collateral damage, if they taking you out and you weren't trying to, you weren't trying to leave some bullshit in the chat, sorry. But they'll try to, a lot of YouTube will try to shut this shit down. Y'all put too much crap in the chat, so they got to be quick on the draw. Appreciate y'all. But, uh, so anti-white racism in America, right? Elijah Al Bay. He was timed out. <laughs> I think he 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 don't. I don't think he's a. I think he's a he's a cool one. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm like I'm I'm look, I'm looking at the live stream. Y'all kicking a whole bunch of people out of the live chat right now. I hope I hope it's the right ones, y'all. But um, so th this book is called is going to be about anti-white racism and discrimination based on DEI. So we talked about DEI and we keep we talked about it a lot. And DEI is basically um, affirmative action on crack. So they ended affirmative action. The Supreme Court ended affirmative action. And so they had to come up with some new bullshit to take its place. So they came up with DEI, which is uh, unofficial affirmative action, right? It's affirmative action implemented by the corporations instead of the government. And um, it's, it's basically... They are leaving out their their um y'all y'all hilarious <laughs> y'all are funny y'all are funny with the chat but um so basically the DEI has been kicking Caucasians what they call Caucasian straight men to the back they've been kicking them they've been kicking the Caucasian straight men. Supposedly, because they have been in power the whole time, right? So now, all the jobs are basically going to BIPOC. Black was it? Uh, what is BIPOC? Um, um, what is BIPOC? That was a uh, Black Indigenous People of Color, right? So, or is going to trans BIPOC. You know, gay BIPOC is <laughs> going to is going to all these different all these different things. But Caucasian men, what they call straight Caucasian men, aren't getting the jobs anymore, right? And so they kind of have sort of a point because an internal memo from Disney came out and said that they couldn't. They're so it was it was from. Um, the human resources department, right? So they hired like a DEI, uh, somebody to head their DEI in Disney. And the person who headed the DEI in Disney, they basically implemented something that said that 50, minimum 50% 50 of casting or jobs in, in Disney had to be uh, BIPOC, black indigenous people of color, trans, gay, you know, all of these people, they 50% of the jobs. So basically what you're doing right off the bat is you are saying you're discriminating based off of who the people are and not what they can do, which is against uh, discrimination laws, against the 14th Amendment, 
also the the civil rights movement the 1960 was it 64 civil rights movement so they kind of have a he kind of has a point where he says it's a thing it's a thing now but when they say the biggest problem in America <laughs> is anti-white racism <laughs> and discrimination nigga come on but see, this is how they pull together when they start to see a problem or a crisis. Caucasian people, they jump on it immediately. They weren't focused on racism or discrimination any time before. But as soon as they become in the crosshairs, they become the focal point in the crosshairs. It's like, they're like, oh, shit. No. Oh, 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 oh. They're like, no, nah, nigga. Shit, we, <laughs> we moving the crosshairs on your ass. And this nigga's ducking and dodging. No, you about to get. So that's now they're crying about racism. It's the biggest problem in America. So then they said there was systemic racism against white people. Systemic racism. So systemic racism. Now. What I just described could be considered systemic racism. If Disney would be considered a system and then they've implemented that only that at, at the minimum 50% of the hires, the people who's hired here has to be black, indigenous people of color, gay, trans, blah, 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 all this and that before you even look at a resume. That means you're casting people for jobs and you're not hiring people. And if you're casting people for jobs, then they acting. They not it's not they not real. They don't know what the fuck they're doing. They acting like they know what they're doing. If they're getting it based off of how they look. So in that aspect, he has a point in that, but it's not the biggest damn problem in America. They full of shit on that now, but it's the biggest problem for them. Because Caucasian people are being pushed to the back and they're losing power. Caucasian people in America are losing power. So when you start to lose power and you've been in this position so damn long and see, they'll say, well, there's no such thing as white privilege. OK, then well, why are you crying? If there's no such thing as white privilege, why are you crying that nobody want white people as the, the stars in movies no more? Or they're not, not that nobody wants them, but nobody's hiring you guys as the stars in movies no more. Why are you so mad about it? You should be happy. If there's no white privilege, then why are you tripping when you ain't in the fucking forefront? When you're not in the, in the magnifying glass, in the spotlight. If there's no white privilege, you shouldn't be, you shouldn't be pissed at all, right? That's what I think. <laughs> if there's no such thing as white privilege, then you shouldn't be pissed at all. When you start to see other people start to gain certain positions. Now, I get it if, you, if they're being supplanted based off of look and not, and not um, merit, where, which is where it should be. If you can't do the job, then you shouldn't be there. However, having said that, all white people who get hired for their job, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. See, there's something called unconscious bias, which they don't they don't cop to most of the time. But unconscious bias is a real thing. What is unconscious bias? That's when you uh, you have a certain, you know, I'm pro a certain thing, but I'm not necessarily conscious about it. I'm just comfortable around a certain thing. But I'm not necessarily conscious about that because it's just my everyday life. So when something that comes in and that enters my sphere that's not of what I'm normally used to, then I'm kind of standoffish towards it. So like if they used to just being around Caucasian people all the time and hiring Caucasian people, then usually what will happen is they'll just pass on jobs to Caucasian people because that's just the people in their sphere, <clears throat> in their circle. And that's who they feel comfortable around. Not that they're discriminating. They, In their mind, they're not discriminating against the melanated person or whoever it is. But, you know, if you're going to choose the people who you feel comfortable with, that's just how that that's just how work goes. And even whether it's conscious or unconscious, but you choose the in, in, in their case, a lot of time they're saying, well, it's unconscious bias. You know what unconscious bias is? If you go to a new restaurant 
say you say you go to a new restaurant, right? It's Peruvian food. Say you go, it's some it's some Peruvian shit, right? And you don't know shit about Peruvian food. You have no idea what the hell they do in Peruvian food. So you go there, the Peruvian, you ain't used to none of the atmosphere. There's Peruvian music playing. You got Peruvian art and all kind of stuff on the walls. And you open the menu and you see a bunch of Peruvian shit. <laughs> you like, God damn, what the fuck is Sabata? Sabata Bato. Uh, the, I know plantains. <laughs> I know plantains. That's all you... But you scrolling down, you know plantains, and then you see, oh, hamburger. You see hamburger. Now, you ain't recognize any of that other shit, but you see hamburger. Now, not necessarily that you love hamburgers, but you used to hamburgers. That's the one thing you know on the menu. You know if I pick hamburgers, I'm not going to go wrong with hamburger because I've had hamburgers before. I know if I pick a hamburger... That may not be the best hamburger of all time, but I know I like hamburgers. <laughs> so you're going to pick the hamburger. Now, you could have gotten a Peruvian dish and been blown out of your mind by the Peruvian dish, which probably would have happened. But you're sticking to burgers because you know you like burgers. And even if the burger is bad, there's 90% chance that you're going to at least not be disgusted by it at the very moment. <laughs> so that's kind of how Caucasian people work in when they're hiring. If they come across something they don't they don't they're not used to, which is usually melanated people, especially hood melanated people. <laughs> they're not used to that. Or intelligent melanated people. Super intelligent melanated people. They're not used to that. They don't know oh shit. I don't they ain't really I ain't never really seen <laughs> <laughs> nigga like that. So I'm just gonna go with Larry over here. Larry, you good, Larry? I know. Yeah, Larry, I know we fired you three times, but you you promise you're not gonna do that anymore, you, right? You're not gonna be looking up girls scorching them. All right, yeah, we know you didn't mean to do it. We understand. All right, Larry, we're we're gonna. I'll see you later. I, yeah, yeah, I'm cool with you too. Thank you. Yeah, we understand. <laughs> They're gonna pick Larry <laughs> because Larry. They familiar with Larry. And even though Larry may be on some bullshit, they know Larry. So that's what unconscious bias is. And these motherfuckers don't want to cop to that. They have that, a bunch of that. And they may not be purposefully doing it to where it's racism. But you are biased for the people that you work with or who, who make you comfortable. Yo, Casanova, appreciate you. Thank you for the, for the uh, super chat. So moving along, uh, there was a Creole woman. Did y'all? I don't know if y'all saw this. This been this went viral. So a Creole woman who looks white but claims she's black is getting destroyed by so-called black people. Did y'all see the TikTok? TikToks of the lady. So she looked white. She looked like she's about in her forties. She looked like an older white lady. But as soon as she started talking, as <laughs> soon as she started talking, excuse me, she black. You can tell she she from, excuse me, she from Louisiana. She is a melanated. She is a sister. Now, people don't, you know, people are like, well, you just, just because you talk like that don't mean you melanated or whatever, right? So she had to go on there and show her whole family who she grew up with when she was a kid. She was the only light skin around all the black people. Like she is her family. All her mama and daddy is melanated. <laughs> her mom, so that she she just came out not melanated or lightly melanated, <laughs> if you want to say. I'm sure she tans in the sun, but she looks white. She looks Caucasian. So they started jumping on her, right? They started smashing on her and all that. You ain't black just because you look black, and you don't and you don't don't make you black, or just because you yeah, just because you uh, you grew up around black people don't make you black, and you didn't live the black experience. How the fuck you know what experience she lived? But if you don't, if 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 we walked into a business and to get a job, and we walk, they gonna they gonna look at you different than they looked at me. So you don't you never you never dealt with the same type of looks and this and that. Like you don't know what her truth is, what she didn't lived with her whole goddamn life. 
Because as soon as she started talking, you could tell she black. <laughs> you could tell she's she New Orleans. She black as hell. <laughs> she melanated as hell. She a sister. You could tell. And all her family is all brothers and sisters. All of them. Like dark, melanated, like me, darker than me. Some of them my, some of them my tone, some of them darker than me. So she had to pull out all her pictures and all that to prove that she was melanated. Now, all these woke people will, especially these woke melanated cats who on the who on the left side, they was they will cape for uh you being you being able to identify as a woman or a man. If, if a, a woman, if you're a man, and a man, if you're a woman, you can identify as something where you're not born as, but you can't identify as another race. You can't know. <laughs> I can't identify with that race. I can't identify with Al Green. If they white, they can't identify with Al Green. They can't identify with Tupac, which is you're more likely to identify with someone's culture. And and you know something like that than you are than a fucking to truly be a, a the physical uh genetically a genetic change a genetic identification so you're that's more believable that I identify with this culture this this resonates with me more than my own culture but no the trans shit I believe that you can be a man and think you're a woman or that you're a woman believe you're a man, but I can't believe that if you white, that you think you're a nigga. <laughs> I can't believe that at all. Like Rachel Dolezal. Like Rachel Dolezal, she she basically, apparently, she said she came up around a whole lot of melanated people. Well, not came up, but she that was her friends. And that's who she vibed with. <laughs> so she wanted to feel like she was melanated. I had a homeboy back in the day. Shout out to... White boy Mike, <laughs> call him White Mike. His rap, he, he was a rapper. His name was Mike Device. And Mike Device thought he was more nigga than any nigga ever in the history of niggadom. <laughs> I promise you, you could not tell Mike he wasn't a nigga. Yo, yeah, what up, dog? What up, son? What up, son? You want, you want me to handle that dog? Like he would, and he wanted to do all Work. Like if he if somebody he thought somebody was messing with me or some shit, he wanted to go smack him up. You want me to handle that dog? <laughs> like, no, nah, chill your ass out. <laughs> this nigga was crazy. And the messed up thing is, the trippy thing is, he didn't try to dress like he was black or nothing, no. He dressed like a Caucasian dude in button-down shirts. He had glasses. Nigga had a crew cut and shit. If he was just walking down the street, you would think he was a regular ass white dude. Uh, like a preppy white dude that was, hey guys. How are you? What are you doing? Can I can I join? <laughs> you would think that he talked like that. Soon as Mike opened his mouth, yo, what up, son? <laughs> what up, dog? <laughs> so Mike was more nigga than anybody. And he could rap his ass off. That nigga could freestyle for an hour. Sat there and watched him do it. Freestyle for an hour and not like some corny shit, like gangster shit. <laughs> he could freestyle that shit for like an hour. So can't tell Mike that he wasn't, he didn't identify as a nigga. <laughs> so, but they trip, they tripping on this actual melanated person. There's an actual melanated person who was just born with recessive, with uh, not recessive, but just lack of melanin. Her, her, her skin melanin was turned off and they done jumped on her. But she said one of the greatest lines that I heard, she said, uh, I'm going to stop messing with y'all because none of y'all affect my life anyway. I, and she was, cause she was, had been letting people get to her. So she said, y'all need to mind the business that pays you. <laughs> I fuck with that. Mind the business that pays you. That's real. Leave me the fuck alone and mind the business that pays you. So shout out to her. Cause she is, she's a sister. Shout out to that sister. You, you damn right. You a sister. I, was, I watched that she she is a sister. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you that right now. She said I'm blacker than anybody in my family, <laughs> or as black as anybody in my family. So, shout out to her. 
And we're going to say shout out to Rachel Dolezal. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but Rachel Dolezal, if you want to if you want to vibe with Al Green and, and, and Wu-Tang and all the rest of that, you can vibe. You can vibe with nigga stuff. Ain't nobody tell you that you can't. I'm just saying. God damn. They with the bullshit. So, moving along. California. So, did you hear California is creating a genealogy office to see who is eligible for reparations and the amount of reparations they're supposed to give each person apparently is around 1.2 million dollars now the only problem is california broke his shit california's broke we ain't got no money. <laughs> California ain't got no damn money. Broke as hell. But they're going to create a genealogy board. A genealogy board to do your ancestry. To see if you are in the lineage of a slave. Yo, who was that? All right, don't spam. Make sure you don't y'all don't spam the... Uh, you know, spam. Yeah, mega inflation for sure. It is super inflation. But what is it? The other thing that it is, it's inflation, but they don't have enough money to do that. So why are they creating a genealogy board? What do you have to do uh, to get your, you know, to to basically get your case seen, evaluated as maybe possibly a descendant of some slaves, right? You got to do some DNA tests. You got to swab, do the DNA, and then send your DNA evidence in. Or if you have history of the your family genealogy, your family ancestry, then you have to archive that and then pile it, compile it up and send that in. So they want you to send in your genetic Hmm. Wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up, California, bitch. <laughs> so, wait a minute. You uh, you broke as hell. You really ain't got no money to give no reparations, but you want me to send in my DNA. Now, is this a way for them to log your DNA? Are they trying to log? Yep, yeah, clone. They clone Tyrone. <laughs> they trying to get your DNA, y'all. Send us your DNA. Come on, we are gonna give you. Come on, when you were when you were slave, your your ancestor, your great your great 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 Thank you for the cash out. Appreciate that. For the cash out. Show me that love right there. Are you are, was your great 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 was a slave? Uh Lisa Maddox. I need to know. California wants to know. So California's full of full of shit. So they said they plan the office to decide. Which residents get payouts and who's left hanging? So, because remember, they tried to say everybody in California was going to get reparations, even though California was never a slave state, never had no slaves. California never had no slaves. So they need to see now just because you melanated doesn't mean you get paid. Right. So now they have to see who really is in the lineage of a slave. And who is going to get left out. So if you just some African immigrants. You came over here in the 1900s. You ain't getting nothing. <laughs> That's what they trying to see. You want this African immigrants nigga. Who just came over here. After slavery. Sorry my nigga. So they said the recipients must be descendants. Of slaves of free black persons. Which the papers show. Again recipients must be descendants. Of slaves of free black persons, their papers need to show that. Goddamn. 
It says, a California lawmaker has unveiled plans for a genealogy office to decide which residents are genuine descendants of slaves and could get life-changing benefits. Life-changing benefits and payouts. Stephen Bradford, a Democratic state senator for L.A. County. Yo, did somebody send me? Oh. So... Stephen Bradford, a Democratic state senator for L.A. County, proposed Bill SB 1403 to create a controversial. See, they already know it's controversial. They already know to create a controversial genealogy unit to confirm reparations eligibility of applicants. Nigga, you ain't gonna get no money. <laughs> yeah, cap. Somebody said cap. <laughs> Hell yeah, that's all cap. They might even, they're not gonna give you any money. Again, for them to do that, they have to take from the taxes in California. Soon as they sign that, soon as they pass off the first check, excuse me, soon as they pass off the first check, you didn't have to erase that cap one. He was saying the cap was the I think he was saying the cap was <laughs> was the law. But uh, as soon as they get their first check, uh, Republicans are going to sue. Republicans are going to sue the state of California against that law. And it's going to be put on hold immediately. And they're going to win. They're going to win. Because it's also, you got Caucasian slaves. So how are you going to you're going to discriminate between the melanated slaves and the Caucasian slaves? But it didn't say that, though, right here. Obviously, maybe you maybe they skirted it because it does say. Hold on. Let me go back because it does say. Uh, hold up. Recipients must be descendants of slaves Oh, of free black persons. See, so that's that means the Caucasian slaves, descendants of Caucasian slaves will be able to come in and sue on discrimination because there were Caucasian slaves in America, just so y'all know. They weren't indentured servants. <laughs> they call You call them indentured servants, they were slaves. So California is capping, just like my man said, it's cap. But uh, again, this is the way for the government to get genealogy information on you and hold it. So don't do it. Don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Don't do it. They're trying to get your genealogy information. They know uh, they can get it through a lot of this, you know, 23andMe and all the rest of that. But that's a private company. Now you'll be sending it directly to the government. You'll be sending your, D your, your DNA information directly to the government at this point. Not only that, if the federal government wants to come in, <clears throat> excuse me. If the federal government wants to come in and wants that information and say, we need the genealogy, we need the DNA information of, you know, uh, the herbal goddess. <laughs> we need the genealogy information of the herbal goddess. Can you give that to us? And then the what if your state says, no, all right, well, we don't, you don't get any more funding, any more federal funding from, for this, 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 and this. They'll hand over your damn DNA immediately. So now your DNA is going to be in the hands of the government. And so they said receiving reparations from federal government. So, oh, let me go back. Oh, so if you receive receiving reparations. So just so you know, if you receive reparations from the government, from the federal government, this is a, this is another scam. If you receive reparations from the federal government, this disqualifies you in receiving your aboriginal inheritance, which is truly the land. You're owed the land. If you're aboriginal here, this is your land. That's truly what reparations means, to be returned to one's land. So most people are actually looking for, for restitution, to be restored to a place of prominence where we were before they instituted all these damn bullshit laws, like before Jim Crow, when we, when they had when we had Black Wall Street and all these banks and all that type of stuff. So, uh, it, but if you take federal money, then you 
you basically disqualify yourself as you know your aboriginal inheritance because it's called availing yourself of the privilege of federal privilege and it places you in a federal area you basically by taking it you become uh, a federal citizen by receiving federal benefits so just so you guys know that then uh <clears throat> aboriginal versus african descent so is it you know should you be claiming Aboriginal versus African descent? I talked about this last week about how uh, on the House of Consciousness I saw the dumbest goddamn debate ever because they just it was nobody it was they was all arguing talking stupid shit other than what Ali Muhammad did the first forty five minutes his information that he presented in the first forty five minutes everybody else on there was just arguing talking bullshit just dumb shit right so then there was another brother I think that was on there the other night <clears throat> talking about. He was, he was the same dude who was arguing on uh, Ali Muhammad's thing. He kept interrupting Ali Muhammad, trying to check him and all that. Ad hominem attacks and all that. You know, attacks on the person. So, I guess House of Consciousness gave him his own show so that he can break down how you're not aboriginal or whatever. <laughs> right? You're not aboriginal. You're, you're African, which is the dumbest thing of all time. So... Now, a lot of people may have different different opinions on this. Are you, are we all descended from Africa? Now, do I believe that? Yes. I believe we're all descended from Africa. You go back, you look at the mitochondria DNA, it all goes back to the mitochondria Eve, which goes back to Africa, right? So, if you take that, everybody goes back to Africa. Even, uh, there's, a, <clears throat> there's a video of this Chinese... Uh, scientists he wanted to prove that all people in china came from there they 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 um had their own lineage right chinese people we devolve we evolved from our own lineage we're not from nobody else we are our own people right what up miss Jeannie? so we are our own people so the scientist he did he went all over china he tested 120 different ethnic groups. This is what he said, 120 different ethnicities, ethnic groups in China, right? 120. 12,000 samples this nigga took. 12,000 samples, <laughs> right? He took. That's a whole lot of samples, DNA samples. You took 12,000. And that nigga came back with like... We from Africa. <laughs> That's what he looked at. Goddamn. He looked nigga. Out of all that damn research, he took all his goddamn money. That nigga, all these samples, he was like, oh, 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 oh shit. Oh, oh, oh. We from Africa. <laughs> that nigga was all sad about it and shit. <laughs> Basically found out everybody in China comes from Africa. Is... is Descendants of Africans. <laughs> it was so funny. He was he was adamant. He was like, nigga, we our own people, bitch. Fuck that. We Chinese, bitch. <laughs> Fuck Chinese, nigga, around here. We don't let us ride on you, bitch, around here, nigga. From China. <laughs> so he was shown. Mm, <laughs> not quite, buddy. <laughs> so... Aboriginal or African. So if you're Aboriginal, the Aboriginals are basically just claiming you had a recent descendancy from, you know, thousands of few thousand years. Well, you know, so the the inhabitants of North America, they claim what, 15,000. If you talk about the Lenny Lenape, they say 15,000 years they've been here. But if you look at something called the Younger Dryas, which is um, like one of the last ice ages. They show, and this is you can go into Graham uh, Graham Hancock. He does. He talks about the younger the younger Dryas all the time. About they found evidence of life in North America here, North America here. Hundred that 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 that's about a hundred thousand years old. Evidence of of intelligent life here. That's like a hundred thousand years old. I think he said hundred and twenty thousand when he was talking about it. So. The 
lineage, the, the lineage or the inhabitants of North America go back a long way. Now, do I think they're older than Africa? A lot of some texts say that the people came from over here and went over there and populated and populated Kemet and all those places over there, which is why the, the knowledge came from that Lumeria or Atlantis was over here and they left Atlantis and went over there and all this whole lot of shit, right? Whole lot of stories, information. Does it matter? No. <laughs> Does any of that shit matter? It matters in the, te in the fact that if you're here, if you're here as a melanated person, you're probably aboriginal. And the reason you want to claim that is because it connects you to the land. So anybody trying to tell you that you need to connect to Africa when you're born here, even if it's, you know, even if your descendancy, your, your lineage is not from here, but you are from here. So it, claim, it, it, it claims you to the land. You have claim to the land, right, as an aboriginal. So they'll take your, they'll take your connection from the land away because they want to take your, your, your claim to the land away. So when they talk about, yeah, even though you from here, but you still African. Well, even though Africa is not named Africa, Africa was called something else before it was called Africa. But they'll say, all right, well, even though you're you're here, you're still African. This is the argument they keep trying to make. And then they say, well, if you if you ain't, if you a descendant of the, the Native Americans over here, what language speak? Say count to three. In an ain't aboriginal language. Count the three or or the stories that Big Mama told. That don't mean shit. You need you need to be able to document your lineage here. That don't mean shit. What the fuck do you mean that don't mean shit? Of course, Big Mama stories mean something. Before there was document physical documentation, the person who held the the family history was a storyteller. It was a person who who told the family history. They didn't write it down. Sometimes they may have written some stuff down, but there was a storyteller in the family who told all the history. Even in Africa, there was a, in the, in the different, they call them tribes now, but I call them nations. But in the different clans, there was a, there was a storyteller of the clan who told the whole history of the clan, like Credo Mutua. He was the storyteller for his people. So, yes, your lineage is passed down through, through uh, verbal, verbal passage. Yes, that's a real thing. So, Big Mama telling you, yeah, we were Native Americans, we Indians. That's a real goddamn thing. Listen to Big Mama. That's a goddamn real thing. Now, again, if I come from the, saying that if I'm in America... Even though I still came from Africa, or my my history, my family, my my lineage came from Africa, that makes me African. That would be the same thing as saying, because my mom is from New Jersey and I was born in California, that make me New Jersey. No, yo, thank you for the cash app, Robin Morgan. Thank you for the cash app. Appreciate you. If my mother was born in Jersey and I'm born in California, I'm Californian. She's New Jerseyan. <laughs> I am where I'm from, not where my my parents or my grandparents or anybody. No, I'm my own person. Which goes to speak to do I know do I know how to count to one, two, three in the ancient language, or do I know the ancient cities or any? No, I don't know. I don't know it, and I don't need to know it. You know why? Because I can create my own shit now. They created what they needed for them back then. That language and their culture and all that. That's what they created for them. That's what they wanted to do for them then in that time. I'm my own person, my own God, and we can create what we want for us now. I don't need to know how to count to three in ancient uh, uh, Lenape or ancient Choctaw or ancient Cherokee or whatever. I don't need to know that shit. This is what I speak now. <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> and if you understand me now that's all that matters I don't need to speak that old shit it just matters if I came from that and so also it really doesn't even matter if you're delineated from it because right now it's called self identification those ancient uh, nations you used to be able to be adopted into a nation 
So even if you weren't born into that nation, you could be adopted into that nation. Like Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson is adopted into the Lakota Nation. The, the, the basketball coach, Phil Jackson. He's, a, he's an adopted Lakota, Aboriginal, Native American. So you can, just like you can be an immigrant, that's because basically being an immigrant to the nation. If they adopt you into their nation, that's basically like adopting you, accepting you as an, as an immigrant into their culture, into their nation. So then that makes you still a part of their nation. So your identification, any government will tell you around the world, is called self-identification. No one can tell you who you are. Do you understand that? The government can't tell you, well, because you you can't find this, you can't find this connection to this person and this connection to this person and this connection to this person that you not are, you not who you say you are. As far as identity. You know why? Because at this point, you you have the genes of some of everybody that's damn near ever existed at this point. There's been so much mixing with the people on the world at this point. You can't claim that you one of any that damn thing. You're all of it. So pick and choose. That's truly how it goes. A geneticist on Fox talked about how you can have a heart. The genes, the genes in your heart can come from one ancestor from Europe. And then the genes in your kidney or your spleen. Excuse me. And the genes from your kidney or your spleen can come from another ancestor in Africa or New Guinea or somewhere like that. So all you people keep trying to talk about, I'm ancient this and I'm ancient that, I'm ancient that. Nigga, just be what the fuck you gonna be now <laughs> and get some shit done today. Stop worrying about all that shit back then. If you're not gonna be as good, as, as great as they were back in the day, and you only claiming that shit so you can poke your chest out talking about I'm ancient, I'm ancient Zimbabwean and I'm ancient, you know, uh, Nigerian, the Nigerian warriors. And I'm ancient. Who gives a fuck? Are you, doing, are you doing any of that shit right now? Huh? Other than running your mouth on YouTube? What the fuck are you doing with your ancientness today? Because if you ain't making nothing better for niggas today or yourself... And you still scared of shit to go out here and talk to a goddamn police officer. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> your ancient, no ancientness don't do shit. If you scared when a police officer pull your ass over. I don't want to hear nothing about your ancient, your ancient history and heritage, nigga. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing about that. If you a Zulu warrior, when a motherfucking cop pull your ass over and you talking about, yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. Yes, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Why don't I? What, I what, what, what do you want me to say? <laughs> you doing that shit? Uh, uh I'm not trying to hear that bullshit. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. It only matters uh, as far as what you're trying to do. Whatever you're trying to get done, that's what matters. If you're trying to be Aboriginal and keep and, and, and connect to the land and get your land, then call yourself Aboriginal. If you, if you, trying to floss and and flex that you some ancient African warriors or some shit, you come from some ancient. Uh, Watusi warriors or some whatever the fuck, <laughs> then do that. But what you what you what you attach yourself to, make sure it's practical and that it does something. It's worth something that you can do something with it, and not just you can sit up and talk shit on YouTube and get followers and be considered a part of the conscious the conscious community. Who gives a shit about that? That the conscious community, when you look at the conscious community, all they do is arguing and running their mouth and talking shit. I'll come smack you and shut the fuck up and doing all this and that. And you making Caucasian people happy as hell that they don't got nothing to worry about. You coming to take over any goddamn thing because all you doing is sitting back and running your mouth and arguing. So that was my thoughts on that. <laughs> God damn. So then moving along. Just real quick. Staying in California. <laughs> uh... An audit in California showed that they spent $24 billion in the last four years on homelessness with nothing to show for it and no accountability for the money. It was like, $24 billion? Y'all gave us $24 billion? Shit, I don't, I don't remember none of that. 
<laughs> nigga, what, 24 billion? Did you did you get 24 billion? I, I didn't see no did you? <laughs> 24 billion dollars just gone for homelessness and nobody know what happened to it. And you walk around in Los Angeles, you damn near stepping over tents and homeless people down there everywhere you go. Unless you go to Beverly Hills, which is where they actually should go. But uh, $24 billion in four years to clean up homelessness. That's way more than enough money to clean up homelessness in, in California. They give the money, said Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi bank account. <laughs> yep. They give the money to, you, you're close, they give the money to these non-governmental or, uh, organizations, right? Agencies or organizations to, to handle the business. Because they say as a government, we don't have the, all the departments to handle everything. So we're going to hire nonprofits to do the thing for us. Just like they're doing with the immigrants in Chicago and New York. And they give government, give these, these, corp these uh, nonprofits the money to deal with the stuff. And they put all that money in their pocket and don't do nothing for the illegal immigrants or anybody same thing happened in california but they just did the audit and came out and they said oh uh 24 billion we uh what <laughs> what 24 what uh 24 billion pesos <laughs> like no 24 billion dollars nigga what happened to the 24 billion dollars we we gave your ass Got a nice crib. You see my hey nigga, you been to my crib lately? Huh? Nigga, you nigga, you ain't been to my crib. Got a nice little pool out back. Got me a nice little jacuzzi. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when I bring the bitches over. You know, that's, you know, that's a different that's that's for a different time. But you know, my house is crazy. You, nigga, you see this shit? <laughs> like, was that what the money was? Don't worry about what the money is supposed to go for, nigga. You know what I'm saying? If, if a homeless person need a place to stay, he can come chill back here. I got a cot for him in the back. <laughs> like, goddamn, yeah, nigga. I'm thinking about homeless people. <laughs> like, nigga, what? <laughs> he can come get in the, sleep in the cot in the back. Yeah. I, nigga, I got about, I got a few cots. <laughs> like, nigga, these niggas are getting rich as shit off the homeless and not doing a goddamn thing. $24 billion? I said, damn it, let me create a fucking nonprofit. <laughs> Shit. I need to create a nonprofit to say I'm gonna go out there and distribute this money to the homeless. Because you know what? I would actually do it. But <laughs> I'm gonna be frugal as fuck about it though. Just saying, whatever's left over, I get to keep, right? As long as I help them, whatever's left over. <laughs> I get the key. Got it. <laughs> Boy, I'm trying to tell you, you better get on the damn ball. All these damn Caucasian organizations out here knowing how to get money from the government and all these places, and we don't know shit. We don't know how to do anything. Know how to create no organizations, no nonprofits to go, none of that, get government contracts, none of that stuff. None of that stuff. And it's all, that's, and we keep complaining that we don't get ahead, but we don't know how to handle business. That's what you got to do to handle business. So, moving along, uh, Biden, Biden signs the global, he's just signed into law, or maybe executive order signed it, uh, he signed the global health security strategy, it's called the global health security strategy, what is the global health security strategy? So this so-called strategy will allow them to battle to, to battle pandemics along with 50 other countries. It's basically like a pandemic treaty, a pandesi treaty that will allow them to battle future pandesis with 50 different countries and corporations. 50 different countries and corporations. This will allow, they said, this will allow them to detect, identify, and respond to future diseases that would have world health implications. The global health security strategy. Hmm. 
So the countries that will be for that will be focused on, they they're focusing on. So basically, what they're doing is focusing on finding new vi you know, new V's. They're focusing on finding new V's, or you know, like that they call uh, um, the XVX, the, the, the vi you know, vir viral X. What they call it, virus X or X virus or some shit like that. That's the new thing they're supposed to be focused on, right? So they're looking for it. So this, excuse me, this global health security thing will allow them, excuse me, to go and basically research disease X or whatever they call it. The countries they're going to be focused on, they already got $2 billion in finance, y'all. He's He just signed the shit. He just signed it. They already got $2 billion in financing. The countries they're going to be focused on are Africa and Asia. So you're about to go into Africa and Asia and look for some deadly new deadly diseases. Okay. <laughs> Africa and Asia, only they got the deadly diseases, huh? Okay. Two billion dollars. And it said it will be funded by it's, or it is funded and will future in, in the future will be funded by countries and private organizations or corporations, one of which is who? I give you one guess, everybody. Who is funding, if it on the private side, who is funding the global health security, uh, the global health security strategy, y'all? Who's doing that? Put it, give me, give me one guess. Who is funding? Yep, Billy. Yep. <laughs> Thank you, above, as above, so below. <laughs> Billy G, baby. Kill Bill. <laughs> yes. So you already know right off the bat it's on some bullshit. You already know right from the jump. If that nigga doing it, <laughs> get it the fuck out. So they're going to be looking for new disease diseases. <laughs> Basically, they're trying to look for one to start so they can start the next Pandeasy. That's what they're looking for. So then this comes out just as another report from the H from the who the H, you know, the WHO whistleblower. So as a, as a whistle, a, a WHO whistleblower in Finland. They said that the cupcake passports were all fake and bullshit. So remember when you had to go to the other, you had to go to a country and they had, you had to have that thing on your phone to show the pass, uh, to pass the, the, uh, what was it? Customs, not customs, but, um, was it customs? I forgot what it, where you had to pass, you know, immigration or whatever. When you get to the thing, you had to show that little thing with the hat that had the QR code. And that was your, uh, your, your, your passport. The WHO dude said that was all bullshit. <laughs> he said, nigga, that was bullshit. It was all fake. <laughs> he, he straight up said this shit was straight bullshit. It said, it was only meant to make people feel better. That's what he said. It was, it was created to make people feel better about traveling. <laughs> This is some, man, we are living in a goddamn cartoon. They gonna feel better if they gotta, if they think we're, we're uh, scanning for viral loads. How much viral load do you have, sir? Huh? This shows that you were in contact with someone with a viral load two weeks ago, sir. We can't let you through. We can't let you through. And all the other people are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see, see, you should have taken your, you should have taken the vaccine. See, I'm going through, I'm going through. Here's mine. Here's mine. Here, I'm, I'm good, right? I'm good. See, <laughs> like motherfucker, <laughs> people just flexing and flossing with their shit. I got mine. Why didn't you get yours? It's being called, it's called being a good citizen, a good American. <laughs> like, <laughs> bitch. I'll beat your ass with that goddamn passport, motherfucker. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was only meant to make you feel better, guys. 
I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better. <laughs> it's only make it's all bullshit. This whole shit is a scam. Mask was a scam. Six feet or what? Six feet distance was a scam. Goddamn cupcake itself. The 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 the, the V itself is a scam. The cupcake is a scam. This whole shit is just all bullshit. So they can implement this one world order, which ain't going well. Not going well for them. Not at all. Because <laughs> we are hip to the bullshit. So, moving along. In rainbow news. Got to talk about rainbow news because they're trying to change the culture with rainbows. So, we got to talk, got to put it on blast when we see it. So, in rainbow news, some middle, the, <coughs> excuse me. Some middle school kids staged a walkout because they were fed up with furry students. Did y'all hear about this? Did y'all see this on TV? Middle school kids staged a walkout of their school. These are like, excuse me, kids are 13, uh, 13, 14, I think. Ain't that middle school? Ain't that middle school? Back when I was middle school. It was 13 and 14. So I don't know where they at now. But uh because they fed up with furry students. What are furry students? Now, if you a freaky ass adult, you know what a furry is. I'm talking to you, freaky ass nigga right here. Mm -hmm. You know why you know what a furry is. You why the fuck do you know what a furry is? Keep my eye on your ass. But if you're freaky, <laughs> you know what a furry is. But that doesn't have shit to do with, that shouldn't have anything to do with children. But what's going on now, kids are identifying as animals. Children are identifying as animals. Talked about this a couple years, about a year ago and a half where the, 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 um, what was it? The substitute teacher. She was fired because this this little girl was in class and meowed because he was she was taking roll of the students, right? Doing roll call. She called out one student and the student meowed. <laughs> and they call out uh Kim meow. Kim meow. <laughs> Kim, meow, 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 meow. <laughs> so, so Kim was in the kitchen. She was in the classroom meowing her ass off. Meow, 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 meow. And so the kid, the teacher was like, "Shut the fuck up, bitch." <laughs> <laughs> not really, but she's like, you can't do that. I'm not gonna answer that. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, you know, uh, you know, play into what you're doing. I'm not gonna, you know, all of that. She, basically, I'm not going for it. So they fired her. They fired the teacher because she wouldn't meow back to the goddamn student. Go Google that shit. That's a real story, y'all. Teacher got fired for not meowing. So now that started to. You know, that was the beginning of this bullshit. Fast forward a year and a half later, you got kids coming to school now calling themselves furries. What do the furries do? They dress up and they got little fur and shit, little fur costumes, little tails, with little, little things with fucking cat ears and shit. <laughs> they bring in bowls. Cat bowl, like water bowls and stuff to school. And putting it on a table and lapping up water and shit. And these teachers are allowing it. These teachers are allowing these kids to do this shit. So much so that they told the regular students, don't do nothing to them. Don't mess with them. Leave them alone. Don't talk to them. Don't look at them. Leave them alone. If they're, they're in their truth or whatever the fuck that means. You ain't in your truth or you think you a goddamn dog. That teacher need their ass beat. For allowing that to go on. But you know why? They're not going to beat the teacher's ass. Because the teacher is letting it go on. Because her kid is one of them. Is one of them damn furry motherfuckers. <laughs> so the teacher is not. Checking any of the school. The, the students because of her kid. And she don't want to. Alienate her child. Right? 
So all the other kids, so what are they doing? They're allowing them in kids. They, 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 now, they're disrupting the class. They scratch, they're scratching kids, students, biting students, and the students aren't allowed to say nothing back. So them kids said, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> so they walked the fuck out. They staged the walkout. All them little kids, shout out to them little kids. 12 years old, 12, 13, 14. Say, like, we not having this shit. So, and they said also the teachers promoted. The teachers are promoting what's going on and not allowing this shit to happen. So, finally, the, fi excuse me, finally, you have students fighting back. This is what's, what's going to have to happen. That's what's going to have to happen. When they're trying to infiltrate, and I don't like to say infiltrate, but when they try to change the psyche, the fundamental psyche of what's been of nature, man and woman, child, you know, little boys, little girls, when they try to do that shit, you got to push back. You can't allow them to do that. The more rope you give them, they're going to think, I own the whole goddamn, uh, <laughs> I own the whole hardware store. You give somebody like that a little rope, they're going to try to take the whole hardware store. So don't do it. So then, moving along, and still in Rainbow News, some other, another middle school. See, this is being pushed hardcore in these middle schools. Another middle school, some middle school girls walked out of a track and field event to protest a Decepticon athlete who was allowed to to be in the track and field. So basically they was doing shot put. You know, the shot put where you turn and yeah, <laughs> you do that shit right there. So a boy is going to be able to do that way, way better than a little girl. So what the little girls did, shout out to them little girls. They all got up there on the platform. They did their little move like they was getting ready to do it and they walked off. They all got up there did this move, and then just walked off. None of them participated. That's what's going to start to have to happen. That's what's going to have to happen, everybody. You're going to have to get in and not participate. When they want to infiltrate, say, we have a right to we have a right to compete against men. Say, we got a right to compete against women. No, you don't. You ain't got no right. These, women, these girls ain't got to compete against you. Some burly-ass nigga <laughs> who's three times stronger than them. They don't have to do that. No, they don't. So finally, the little girls they, and the kids, everybody are starting to say, all right, well, we just won't. We're not going to participate. You trying to push this on us, the little kids. So the little kids, I hope they're getting they're getting they're getting some guidance from their parents and said, don't let them do it. Stop letting them do that shit to you. Shout out to those little girls. Shit. Stop letting them do it. Because then, moving along, still <clears throat> in, in Rainbow News, a Decepticon college athlete, Camden Schreiner, breaks two women's college records, track records. See, this is why you need to protect the women's faces. This burly-ass nigga, <laughs> he gets up there. I hope you see, go watch the film. Because they when they on the track, this nigga just eats the girls up like it ain't nothing. <laughs> this nigga just... He passed, I mean, he beat this girl's by a mile. Like, it ain't even, I can't, I'm trying to show you, but it was like this. <laughs> it was like, that nigga was, on, by the time them other girls got across the damn finish line, this nigga was at home watching. <laughs> this nigga was at home flipping through, flipping through his cable and shit, had his feet up, eating a box of cookies. As they were just crossing the line, this nigga had killed them. And then they were named, this dude was named Liberty League Women's Athlete of the Week. <laughs> he was named Women's Athlete of the Week. He ain't went through no sex changes or nothing. This nigga's a big ass dude. Hi, guys. Can I, this is my starting spot, guys. Oh, this is my starting spot. Hey, Carol. Hey, hey. <laughs> like, man. Yo, fair competition, guys. Great. Have a good, have a good run. Have a good run, guys. 
See you at the finish line. See you if you can catch me. <laughs> it's like, nigga, sit the fuck down back there, bitch. It's terrible. This is terrible. Women's athlete of the week. What <laughs> are you doing? Why, why are y'all playing into this shit, man? Because then, playing along with it, Biden, bitch ass, passes a law, penalizes called uh, Title IX. Go type up Title IX. Biden, Title IX. So in this, Biden, uh, Biden passes a law penalizing school districts or programs that discriminate against gender or sex or pronouns. Because they see a lot of these athletic leagues, a lot of these athletic leagues are starting to create policies where biological men can't compete against biological girls or biological boys against biological girls. So these are in states, right? So you're not supposed to have any say so in the states, the federal government. So Biden's bitch ass who's not supposed to create laws, what he's going to do is say, all right, well, Title IX says if you discriminate against somebody based on their sex, gender, or uh, pronouns, then you don't get no federal money. See, this is how they do. This is all, It's always extortion. Blackmails, extortion. You better do this, bitch, or you don't get no federal money. That's how they always get you. Because you've been sucking on the federal titty for so goddamn long this is the gargling the federal ball you federal ball gargler <laughs> and so when they try to pull one ball out of your mouth you're like hey give me that ball back i need it i need that ball <laughs> it's very salty pause <laughs> give me the ball back please <laughs> so they know people are attached to the ball <laughs> they know it. Atomic Dog. Oh, man. Appreciate you from D.C. Thank you, Atomic Dog. Hooking me up every week with that, man. Appreciate you. Atomic Dog knows. Stay away from the stay away from government ball gargles. <laughs> he knows. Stay away from them. <laughs> That's what they get you. So if you've been gargling the, the government ball, you're going to have to let girl dudes play against girls. You can't discriminate against my pronouns. All of that bullshit. So, then, last thing, <clears throat> they say women and men are the same. So this, is, this is their claim. Women and men are the same, right? Nothing, no different. Women and men are the same. But this, this fucking dude just smoked the shit out of top athletes in college. <laughs> he just, I mean, he smoked them bitches. When I say he smoked them, he killed, but they were damn near, he was damn near when they started, he was done. <laughs> damn near when he started, they were done. Yeah, no, we gonna say no diddy. That's how you say it now, no diddy. <laughs> no, it ain't paused no more. Now it's no diddy. <laughs> That's hilarious. <clears throat> so no diddy. <laughs> But, uh, so women and men are the same. First of all, I, for one, am so glad we are not because women are so awesome. God damn. God damn, women is awesome. Let me tell you, Laguna was great. Let me tell you that right now, Laguna. <laughs> but, uh, women are awesome. And thank God they ain't like dudes. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I ain't even no Christian, but thank Jesus Christ and all them Christians <laughs> that women are not like dudes. But they say they are, right? So, but when Serena Williams, so they said Serena Williams could beat a dude, right? They said Serena Williams could beat a man, could beat like an average tennis player, right? They said, so they said that Serena could beat, or this, and so, you know, this is, this was the, the narrative, right? So then, uh, when Serena and then when Serena was younger, they challenged some men or a man to 
a tennis match. I don't know if y'all remember this. So they challenged the man to a tennis match, the 200th or higher. So they, Serena said, I can beat the 200th best man in the world or higher, like 201, 203, or 204, something like that, right? Anybody 200 or rank or higher, I can beat. So this one dude, he was like, all right. <laughs> he took the, he took the, uh, he took the thing. He was ranked 203 in the world, right? This dude was ranked number 203. <laughs> this is how he clowned him. This is how he clowned Serena. Before the match, that nigga went and played around the golf. <laughs> That before they had the tennis match that morning, this nigga went and played golf that morning. <laughs> Clowning, right? <laughs> About to go get me a few tees of golf. I ain't worried at all. Then, <laughs> when he got to the tennis match, <laughs> this nigga so disrespectful. This nigga got to the tennis match. He lit up a cigarette, and he was smoking a cigarette in between points. Like so, you know, you go to the you go to the thing. You t you get one love. You know, you get ten love, twenty love, forty, thirty love, whatever, forty love, right? So after each point over of a thing, he would go back and grab a cigarette. If he's sitting back like this, <laughs> that nigga was chilling. Yo, yo, Caddy Williams, appreciate you. He said it's fair game at this point because women allow this nonsense to happen. Just saying. Hey, you right. You absolutely right. But Serena, she got so, during the match, <laughs> this nigga, <laughs> this nigga, yeah, baby, so you know, man, uh, yeah, you know, see, I went, I went playing golf this morning, goddamn, nigga, I had a man, nigga, almost had, nigga, almost hit a hole in one, goddamn, nigga, yeah, I was on the, so he talking about golfing and shit, Serena and them over there like, <laughs> <laughs> they over there huffing and puffing. <laughs> Serena over there get her ass beat. She got her ass beat six nothing. Then, uh, then Venus jumped in, and he whooped Venus ass. <laughs> he whooped both of them <laughs> back to back while smoking a cigarette, talking shit after playing golf that morning. <laughs> and he the number two hundred and third best player. <laughs> Women and men are the same. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Get the entire fuck out of here. So it was after that that Serena finally understood. And then she went on like, uh, I think it was Jimmy Kimmel or one of those shows. And she said, uh, she because he said, I think you can be the man. And that's when she said, no, I don't even want to play a man. I don't you know. She's like, men are different. She's like, they're faster. The serve is different. And this and that. She understood because she talked that shit before and got her ass beat. <laughs> <laughs> so she knows. This is why they have to start standing up for themselves. You got to do it, lady. Sorry. 200. <laughs> this nigga got, this nigga was smoking, nigga smoking blunts in between points and shit. Hilarious. So moving along. Last thing. Science and science in the weird. So New York people, science and the weird, bird flu outbreak in New York City animals prompts new health alert. New Yorkers are told to stay away from wildlife. Here they go, y'all. Bird flu in New York. Hey, you better, they coming for you. You better get over there, get to Know Your Rights Foundation, get your damn exemption. You see, I told you last week, they said a farm worker had caught it. Remember that? That it was now easily passable from animal to humans now? Now in New York, they tell you, hey, some birds in New York, some wildlife, some animals got the bird flu. Okay, some animals in New York got the bird flu. And New Yorkers stay away from the wildlife. This is what they said. And it says, <clears throat> here's the article, geese, hawks, falcons, and, ch and a chicken on Manhattan have been tested positive or have tested positive for H5N1. That's bird flu. All right. A geese, hawks, falcons, and a chicken. And a chicken? See, that's how they going to get niggas. A chicken? Don't fuck with the chicken. 
<laughs> God damn it, Bobby. They don't fuck with the dick out of chicken. We don't know. We don't eat geese or hawks or falcons. But chicken? Oh, man. New Yorkers. A chicken was found with bird flu in New York. God damn. <laughs> so, you see what they're going to do, right? You see how they're about to try to do it. So it says, New Yorkers are being urged to keep their distance from wildlife after bird flu was discovered in New York City. Amid fears, the disease could jump to humans. That's what I talked about last week. See, they trying to drum this bullshit up. Chicken? They know niggas love chicken. <laughs> Everybody loves chicken. That's a, first of all, that's just a myth that only niggas love chicken. White people love chicken more than niggas. That's a fact. So it says residents are being warned not to chase wild birds or touch their droppings. <laughs> Who in the fuck is running around chasing goddamn... <laughs> Chasing a fucking bird like this nigga. We in, we in the goddamn woods in the country doing cockfights or some shit. You chase who nigga in New York is just <laughs> running around here chasing a goddamn bird or touch its droppings. It's shit. Don't touch the bird shit, y'all. Who is just hey y'all? Look, it's some bird shit. Hey, is that really bird shit? Hmm. Hmm. That's like maybe. Let me, let me do it again. <laughs> Nigga, who is doing that? <laughs> Don't touch the bird shit. Who is anywhere touching bird shit? Goddamn. <laughs> These people have lost their goddamn mind. Don't chase no birds around, people in New York. <laughs> Just so we're clear. Don't chase no birds. Or be running around with a with a cup trying to catch the, the droppings <laughs> as they doing it. Trying to give a, a bird a mobile bathroom and shit. <laughs> you chase you following him with a cup. Hold on, bird. Hold on. Let, let me get you. Let me, I got you. I got you, bird. Hey, I got you, baby. <laughs> no, don't do that. They said. <laughs> this is some bullshit. <laughs> they are fucking insane, man. They said, uh, they may <clears throat> so. Oh, so really, this may be how they trying to kill off the illegal immigrants. That's a little theory. Not, you know, I'll let, you know, just saying. How they gonna get rid of all them goddamn illegal immigrants? That's just staying outside. I know I'm crazy, herbal goddess. <laughs> I know I'm crazy. <laughs> how they gonna get rid of them immigrants, though? If they release a bunch of chickens... And falcons and hawks with bird or pigeons. If they release a bunch of pigeons in the park with bird flu, mm, I'm just saying. My mind worked like that. I'm just saying. What if they just release a bunch of pigeons in the parks with bird flu? They didn't already said it's in the chicken. <clears throat> it's in the chicken. So moving along in the science in the weird, uh, at an alien, another alien press conference in Peru. Remember they had the other alien press conference when they had the little tiny aliens and one was pregnant. Excuse me. They had the little aliens. They looked like statues, but they were petrified aliens. And one of the aliens, they said, had eggs. It was eggs inside the... the uh... <laughs> They said, no turkey burgers? No, I'm eating, uh, well, maybe not turkey burger. I may, it may be some chicken shawarma later on today because I, I haven't had chicken shawarma in a few days. I'm missing my chicken shawarma. But, uh, <laughs> so in Peru, <clears throat> the scientists again, they said they found another alien. They were doing another uh, press conference to show they found another alien. Now, this alien had three hands. It was a, ske a skeleton of an alien who was curled up kind of like, it was kind of in the fetal position, but it was holding on to its stomach like this, like it had a, like it was pregnant. 
like the baby, like so it was holding on to his stomach like it was pregnant. So they said that it was a pregnant alien. They said, uh, so this is what they said. Alien species, excuse me, alien mummies press conference descends into chaos as Peruvian officials try to seize the new pregnant specimen that has three fingers and three toes. If you go look at it, the skeleton, it only has three fingers and three toes, so it's not human. And it had one of them long ass heads and shit. Three fingers, three toes. <clears throat> Crazy. That shit fucking long ass, long no. It wasn't like three of my fingers. It's like three claws. <laughs> it's like three long ass, like, <clears throat> like them motherfucker hook your ass from across the field. <clears throat> so they had that. And so the Peruvian officials, they kicked the door in. Come here, bitch, we're the alien. Give us the alien. Give us the goddamn alien, motherfucker. And they were like, uh, we don't have the alien here. <laughs> they only they were doing a presentation of the alien because they know the Peruvian government was going to try to jack them. So they only did a presentation because they don't want <clears throat> the, the, the Peruvian government is trying to confiscate, excuse me, these artifacts as, uh, Government of government official artifacts or some shit, trying to control them so they can make money off of them, really, or so they can hide what they really are. You know, you be the judge. They make money, or try to hide, or trying to hide the fact that it's really aliens. But uh, so they came in to steal the mummies, and wasn't no mummies. <laughs> so they told, "Hey, sit your ass down in the corner and watch the and watch the presentation because it was all on on the screen." <laughs> and they felt stupid as shit. They walked in there. Hey, where are the aliens? Ain't no aliens. <laughs> Ain't, we, don't, we didn't bring them here. Because we knew your bitch ass was going to try to kick the door down and confiscate the aliens. But I urge you to go look at the pictures of the aliens. That's a goddamn alien. Now, they're trying to say, is it real? So these are the same people who presented the other the other artifacts and they found out those were real. So why why does this person, these people are just bringing in fake ass skeletons? No. So what's going on in Peru, y'all? They keep finding aliens, pregnant aliens in Peru. To be exact, why are they finding pregnant aliens in Peru? What went down that we don't know about in Peru? I'm just saying. So then it said, oh, here we go. It says, in a scene straight out of an act, uh, excuse me, in a scene straight out of a sci-fi thriller, a press conference showing alien mummies took a bizarre turn after Peruvian authorities attempted to seize a pregnant new specimen. Please go look at it because it looks crazy as hell. And they'll try to tell you because they couldn't seize the alien, it's fake. But they tested the old ones, the other three that they found, and found that they were real. So why would they be, why would they be presenting a fake skeleton after they've already shown you they got three real ones? So... That didn't make any sense. They was trying to get that money. That Peruvian government was trying to get that money. So moving along, <clears throat> scientists, they find that they find what's called vampire bacteria. They have a thirst for human blood. Vampire bacteria. The fuck is that? What in the entire <laughs> is vampire bacteria. This world, man, they just... So, <clears throat> vampire bacteria. <laughs> Thirst for human blood. Infectious bacteria make a beeline <clears throat> for blood just like sharks a new study finds. Infectious bacteria make a beeline for blood, just like sharks. So then it says, Salmon <clears throat> excuse me, Salmonella, E. coli, and related bacteria can detect tiny amounts of blood serum. This is what it said. 
Salmonella, E. coli, and related bacteria can detect tiny amounts of blood serum. Deadly bacteria of the world have been found to seek and feast on human blood. <laughs> so, researchers at Washington State University uncovered a new trait called bacterial vampirism. Among bacteria like Salmonella and E. coli, which cause foodborne illnesses. The team found that these bacteria are attracted to the liquid part of your blood, the plasma, or the serum, which they call serums, also plasma, which contains nutrients the bacteria can use as food. Shit! <laughs> That's why you can't get rid of deadly bacteria but what you can get is the silver you better go get you some damn nano silver colloidal silver not colloidal colloidal silver may work too but nano silver now that's the better technology nano silver one silver solution usa.com kills everything 700 types of bacteria bad bacteria and, vi and viruses proven it's patented it's in the patent. If you go to the patent office, if you buy the bottle, look on the back, it'll show you a patent that it has. Go to the patent office, put that patent in there, and you can read the patent on the nano silver and what it does and what it can do. So, bacteria, vampire, vampire bacteria, I got something for you, Nick. <laughs> I got the crawl, I got the... the, the, the Nano silver cross, bitch. I think like, <laughs> like <laughs> I'm gonna come in there with the cross on your ass, vampire bacteria. But the health, the key to this is to be healthy, y'all. Be clean. Cleanse your. Don't be leaving food out on your counter and all that type of shit. Wipe off the counters. Come on, y'all. <laughs> this is just being clean. Take your showers. If you go to the gym, you, you, go on, the, you on the bus, wash your hands. Be cleanly, man. <laughs> that's, a, that's how you get rid of bad bacteria at first, before they get into your body to find the blood. Because if you got a cut or something like that, they're attracted to that cut. And boom, they got you. After that, so vampire bacteria love your blood. I, that was a new one for me. I was like, "What? <laughs> Some vampire bacteria? Oh shit! I gotta see this shit." <laughs> God damn. So, and then it was the other thing I had. Uh, So then the last thing I got is the police state. <clears throat> so police stop law. So don't the lonely the main lesson I have for today is because a lot of you guys um, you seem to be apathetic about what's going on, what's going on right now. I mean apathetic mean I just, you know, I'm in it, but not of it. I'm just in it, not of it. I Meaning you just don't really give a shit, right? But, uh, oh, the Cash App. <laughs> Thank everybody who also hit me on the Cash App. That's Real Nagas 9. We got the Cash App, Real Nagas, the number nine. Appreciate y'all. Everybody on the Cash App. But, um, we're getting into this police state. It's coming. I don't even like saying it like that because I don't like trying to speak shit up. But that's my, that's what I do is watch things and see how they're coming together. My, my job is to see what's going to go on so you can prepare before it happens, right? And so this police state that they got coming is about to go down. Like I said, they have so many stores closing right now because of theft. Like cats are just rolling in, snatching whole, snatching, like, so they had, they just, they just 
found that this woman and her family had a whole network, a, a crime network, that they were just going to places and jacking and jacking clothes and bags and shit. At least minimum five hundred thousand dollars. Five hundred thousand dollars. They were jacking, right? And that was a minimum. This is what they could prove. The stuff that they hadn't sold. So they jacked them women up, found out they had a whole operation going. So then they're doing all these investigations and finding they have all these damn uh, burglary operations going on in these different states. So a lot of stores are closing, but the cities won't be able to survive if the businesses close down. So ultimately, <clears throat> the state or the businesses or, or the, the, the states and the cities are going to have to implement some draconian laws in order to smash down and clamp down on the crime that's going on. When I mean draconian laws, I mean if you steal, you steal, that's an automatic three to five years in jail type of shit. Yo, Wanda Gross, I tell you, the Cash App is Real Nagas 9. If you go to Cash App, it's Real Nagas 9. Thank you. So, what are you guys going to do? We just had some new people, some new volunteers who come in to, came to the Know Your Rights Foundation. And they said, uh, cause I, this is because I've told you before, don't come to me after the fact. <laughs> don't come to me after the fact because I'm not, I'm not a, I'm going to save you type of dude. I teach you how to whoop ass. That's what I, that's my job. I teach people how to whoop ass. <laughs> that's been my thing since for the last 20 some almost 30 years i teach martial arts i teach you how to fight before you get into the fight so that you don't need you don't need assistance and so same thing with the training here this is martial art this is law martial arts law kung fu law fu <laughs> if you if you want to if you want to break it down this is law fu so yo wanda gross keep the you got to stop spamming. They put the cash app in there. If you keep asking this, that means you're spamming. You're spamming the 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 chat. Don't do that. Um, so law food is the thing. That's what I teach. But I'm not gonna get into the fight for you. I'm not gonna come. You can't call me once you've got into some shit and you know you should have learned how to have hands before you got into the fight. And so now you want you want somebody to come save you? No, I don't do that shit. Yo, Jonathan Crawford, thank you for the cash app. Appreciate you. I don't do that. Unless you're like outnumbered or something like that. But even then, if you learn how to scrap beforehand, then you'll know how not to be outnumbered. You'll know how not to get in those situations before it happened. So this is what y'all need to do. <laughs> you already know. I'm teaching y'all law food. Get in this damn dojo and learn some law food. Damn it. <laughs> be the Bruce Lee of law. Get this damn book. Know your rights manual. Teach your children. Teach them these hands. How to how, these hands and legs. These feet. Teach them how to have some good, some some uh, <laughs> some Taekwondo law feet right here. And then teach them how to get accountability on police officers when they violate their constitutional rights. Right here with the uh, public official bonds book. Go after their police insurance. This is going to be of the utmost importance. I hope y'all understand that. And you will see it about two years, three years down the line. It's, I hope it don't be too late. But like the people in the, in, in the interview, they said, you were saying, I didn't want to be one of the ones who, who got their ass beat and then come and, and need some help later. You're right. <laughs> don't come to me after you get your ass whooped. Yo, you, what's that? Ukneka, Ukneka, appreciate you. Ukneka. Appreciate you for the cash app. Thank you. Don't come after me. No, I'm not gonna help you. <laughs> don't come after me when you after you got your ass whooping. You knew you should have learned hands before that. So please make sure you get your stuff. Get your get the cards. All the cards that we have for you. We've given you all the tools. These are your ninja stars. I've given you ninja stars. These are your swords. <laughs> and shields. I've given you ninja stars and darts. You can, you can get them off real quick to pull it from behind you. Yeah, how you doing, officer? You can do all of that. But you have to know the law to be able to wield 
the stars in a way that they can cut through the wind and hit your target at the utmost accuracy. So make sure you get out there and get your log. If you get the great book of melanin research, realnagas.com, I will give you all of this for free. And it is free. You're not owed this because you buy this book. You should get this book on its own. Teaching you how, how to work your melanin, your high, your biohydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the most powerful thing or the thing that's powering the world right now. And you have it running over your body. This tells you about it and what it does. You should have this book. But if you get this book, the hard copy, you get all of that for free. And also you get the constitutional rights card and the, the qualified immunity card and notice. You're going to need these tools when they put this police state in. When Trump gets in, he's going to ramp up the police state bigger than you've ever seen. He is a huge police supporter. Huge. They, and they love that nigga. So he's going to give the police officers around the country everything they need to smash on you. And if you're not prepared, goddamn, I feel for you. So again, don't get caught out in the wind. You keep these in your car. You say, you put these on the window, say, I don't answer questions, officer. If that young brother who got pulled over for the seatbelt got shot 96 times, if he had these, he would have, he would be living. I promise you. He was scared. He didn't know what to do. It was only a police. It was only a seatbelt that he got pulled over for. So if he knew how to handle a simple uh, traffic stop for a seatbelt, which you would learn in the first damn couple of days, and also if you have these, there's nothing to fear. But you have to get up and you have to do it. You have to get off your ass. And so, yes, I'm yelling at you. I'm talking tough. I'm talking tough to you. I'm talking rough to you. Because, but you got to get up and get off your ass and do it. Sorry, y'all. That's how I, that's, sorry, y'all. This is my energy. This is how I talk. I don't deal with no bullshit. I'm not going to talk to you. Hey, guys, you really need this. Don't you know that you're going to need this in the future? What if happens if the police come to you and they're, they're not so nice? What if the police are not so nice to you? They come up to you and they say, hey, guy. Hey, I don't trust you. I don't believe you. Come in with me. Cause you're gonna go with me. What happens when that happens? No, I don't talk to you like that. Fuck that. These police are gonna beat your ass. <laughs> These police are coming for your ass. They're coming to beat your ass. No diddy. <laughs> so, but they're coming for you. So make sure you prepare. Get out there. And if you want any of this stuff individually, please go to knowyourrightsfoundation.org and get all the stuff individually to learn all the, to learn everything you need to know to protect yourself and your children, your family members against what's coming those police and that's the police state. Also, uh excuse me, if you want to know if you want to learn the law for free, we're teaching you law for free, everybody. The Know Your Rights Foundation Academy is free. We are teaching you for free. You have to work to get this certification. That's the deal. So it's not necessarily free. You have, we need a commitment. Your, your, your price is the commitment to you for you to get this uh, police stop law certification. Go back out to your community and teach this to the community. So that's the payment. So if you're willing to do that, go over to knowyourrightsfoundation.org, sign up, and so that we can we can make this uh, one million Johnny Cochran movement mash out. All right? That's it for me. I'm about to take my cash apps and order me some chicken shawarma. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate you on that chicken swarmer. See, I can order chicken, uh, New York, because ain't no bird flu been found in Los Angeles yet. So let me eat all the chicken I can <laughs> before the bird flu hit Los Angeles. Appreciate you, everybody, who showed up today. Uh, uh, happy 420 to everybody, because I may celebrate that myself after, you know, <laughs> a little bit later. But happy 420 to everybody. Happy Saturday Day to everybody. Appreciate all the mods. That's Faith Ford, Christopher Perkins, Miss Jeannie. Uh, Leo Fire, uh, Geechee Dan, and anybody else I miss, anybody else I missed in here, bro, Mel, everybody, hope I got, uh, Maria Carbajal, all my, all the mods, appreciate you guys, thank everybody for hitting the super chat and the cash app, I'm gonna holler at y'all next week, peace.